call to order the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board for September 8, 2014. We have a fairly full agenda tonight. We have three environmental design review hearings. The first one is for the 1098 Mass Ave property. Second one is also for the 1098 Mass Ave property, more in relation to the Verizon telecommunications edition. The third one, I believe the applicant intends to withdraw. Um, it is for 990 Mass Ave for T-Mobile um, replacement of antennas. Um, so I don't think we'll be hearing that one today. They're withdrawing based on um, their intent to get an administrative review under the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act. That's right. 2012. We should determine whether anyone is here for that. Yes, yeah, so if anybody's here for that one. Uh, okay. No one? Okay. Do we know for sure that they've withdrawn? They have not formally withdrawn. We have been, it's been reported to us that they intend to withdraw to seek administrative review. Okay. We're from the building, the, from the Minneapolis property well, manager. Okay. Which, uh, I guess it is. 990. The 990 Mass Ave, so I guess they, they didn't tell us. Oh, well, if they, they, if they haven't formally, though, I mean, they haven't told that, is, that sure. is a little... They're third on the agenda. They're, on, they're at eight o'clock. Um, Maybe you want to go and just peek back in. Are they coming? We don't know. We're not sure. Oh, yeah, they haven't told us whether oh, they're coming or not. Yeah. Rumor has them. Oh, sure. yeah. okay. Rumor has them. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. I apologize about that. Anyone else well, here for that? For that building? So then the fourth item on the agenda is we're going to discuss closing out an escrow account for the. Um, property at 3050 Mill Street. Uh, then we're going to have a update on the Central School. There's some uh, work that's being done there, potentially. We're going to review a sign ordinance um, that the Planning Department is proposing. And then we have minutes to approve. So, um, I'd like to now open the Environmental Design Review Special Permit uh, for our first applicant um, from uh, Greater Boston Motorsports. And this is uh, mostly to hear um, a proposed change to parking uh, requirements and tenant occupancy at that site. So if the applicant wants to come up, state your name. Stand right here. Introduce uh, yourself. No, you can sit. Oh. Your name, your title. My name is... Uh, Robert Serendolo, I'm the owner and operator and manager of uh, Greater Boston Motorsports in Arlington. And uh, I've been there since its inception in the mid-1970s. It's a family-owned and operated uh, facility. And uh, so I thank you for hearing our plea this evening. Okay, thank you. If you want to walk us through sure. your application. Um, what brought us to this point, and it's a good thing that we're here, um, is we've had uh, a tenant, uh, Verizon, who wanted to put a, an antenna up on the roof, so it brought to light uh, some of the situations on our property. Um, it's been quite some time since this has been reviewed. Uh, I'm going to say 10 to, let's even say 20 years. Back then, uh, we had six tenants in the building. Uh, we put the building up two levels uh, way back when, in 79, 80, 81. Uh, in order to uh, stay alive in business. It was a tumultuous time. Uh, I remember even being uh, next to my dad, getting those very expensive loans at 18 to 21 percent during the Cotter administration. Uh, my rack actually went through a rehab at that time. But we did it in order to uh, create uh, rental income so we could stay alive in business. So that was the purpose. So we had tenants in the building uh, for almost 20 years, about six tenants at one point. And so we went through the process of uh, having a certain amount of parking available for those tenants, and that is the last you know known record on file with the with the town of Arlington. Um, so what we're here tonight to do is update. And uh, the building in the last 20 years, uh, we've slowly uh, uh, the tenants are no longer there. Actually, indeed, we only have one tenant at the very top floor of the building. It's a karate studio. Two young women run the studio right now, and there's no, uh, 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 they don't have any assigned parking. The parking that was assigned was for the uh, for the lower uh, buildings. 
So what has happened there in the last uh, 10 to even 20 years is we've now occupied the total building. Downstairs is our motorcycle showroom and upstairs is a pro shop. So it's all one tenant and it's owner occupied uh, completely right, by us. And uh, because of that, uh, we're not in need uh, of all that parking because we no longer have tenants. And we sat with Michael and did, uh, we estimated uh, uh, the square footage of the building and so forth, and we came up with a proposal which I, I submitted, which was, I don't even have the old proposal of all that parking, but the new proposal that we put together um, as Michael and I, uh, and Michael actually did his calculations, we came up with a, a 13 uh, proposed parking spots, which I submitted to the town. Those are clearly marked uh, for the parking that we would need for 1098 uh, Mass Ave. Uh, there is another uh, tenant in there uh, that it was an existing uh, facility, which we own and operate as well, which is the Island Tire Company. Uh, so that is the same parking. It's never changed in years. Uh, so including Allen Tire and the GBM main showroom, which is owner-occupied, uh, Michael uh, calculated that 13 would be the, uh, the lucky number for us uh, for parking. So I clearly marked where those 13 spots would be. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Scratch that. The, uh, the number that we came up with was uh, 10. I'm sorry, 10, and I clearly uh, designated each of those spots. Just to add a little, uh, just in, in, to, in summary, uh, over the last uh, 20 years, I've been personally involved with some general management. I'm at the facility every single week. I'm not there every single day. Um, we do have some wonderful general management that have been with me uh, 20 years uh, plus in each, de each department. Uh, so they run the day-to-day -day operations there. But in that 20 years time, we've done a, a vast amount of improvement on the property, inside and out. Uh, most recently, we added a couple of flower pots that was with the town uh, to the front entrance. Uh, those are well-maintained and groomed all the time. They look nice. They look nice when you see it. Um, this is just a small little semi-green area as you go into the front lobby area. These shrubs are maintained every single uh, year, and that's always been there for, for the 30 years. There's a little green area here, and I wanted to clarify for the town this back area. 20 years ago, when there was parking assigned <laughs> everywhere, the slope and the soil and the trees lent itself to do some beautification back there at some level. But the soil is not good, and the trees have now grown to a point where it's so uh, dark nothing would really grow there. So I wanted to amend this evening that that's not a green area. That is a soil buffer area. <clears throat> it's just, and I wouldn't even call it soil, but we'll call it a hard soil buffered area. So that's a, I threw that green in inadvertently, so that should really be adjusted and amended. That's just a buffer soil area. Um, so we're here to reassess the new current use of the building, which is a single tenant me. Uh, us as a single operator. The karate studio, which is just a uh, two girls running a karate studio, not uh, a parking situation, and the Arlington Tire uh, situation, which has never changed. Uh, the other thing, and I put some notes here for, for the board, uh, just to reference them briefly and uh, conclude, is that the uh, current special permits that, that were issued 10 to 20 to even 30 years ago, if we go back to the originals, reflect the time when the property housed several tenants. Now it's 90% only occupied by us. And we're a power sports dealership. It's not just motorcycles anymore. Power sports is everything from Honda generators to uh, mopeds to scooters to very green things that really come around in, 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 in the industry. Uh, we're seeing back in the day. Uh, Boston residents with 3% uh, two-wheel vehicles. We're, we're cresting onto 7% and we're thinking that, you know, 10% of the Boston area is going to be on some kind of a two-wheel motorized vehicle and even more so. Uh, they're quiet. Uh, we're, in, we're in good cooperation with, as far as I know, every single one of our neighbors. We, we try to cooperate fully. We've had some uh, what we call peak season issues and I referenced that here, uh, that um, that we're a very seasonal business. We're really peaking for about 90 days, so we have an influx of, of, of consumers uh, coming in. Uh, so we do get very busy, and, the, and, the, and so we're, we're aware of that. 
and we're going to take extra care to make sure that uh, we comply uh, with uh, our neighbors, number one, but in the, in the Mass Ave and all that comes with that. Uh, luckily, uh, it's not a 12-month year. If it was, it would be more, a little more even keel, but we have this spike in our business. And that we've owned and operated the, the, uh, uh, the property for 35 years, and I'm proud to say that, uh, you know, it's a family-run business, and we, we like to maintain it and cooperate with the town any way we can. So we, we love being in Arlington. And I'm an Arlington guy, graduated Arlington Catholic, 78, so this is my hometown. So, that's it. That's okay. my, uh, Thank you for walking us through that. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to turn to the board now for any questions that you may have, and then we can go through maybe point by point the EDR and come up with any conditions that we think we might need. So if you want to start. And if I could just borrow a pen in case I need one, is that okay? Yes. Sure. Good problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Sarandolo? Yes. If I'm saying your name correctly, yes, I'm not, I apologize. Um, is, you mentioned that the only other tenant of the property is the karate studio. Um, in the course of hearing the presentation for the wireless facility, mm. uh, some of the public comment also indicated there's a music studio. Oh, and that's a, um, that's my, that's my brother-in-law, it's my, my sister's husband. He goes in uh, evenings from, he has met with the board, he goes in evenings 8 to 10, and it's completely soundproof. He's been told and warned, I guess once, I'll say told and warned, uh, that uh, he can play and teach his music lesson, lessons up until 10 p.m. Uh, we were even going to ask the board to go back to 9, but it's not possible. He works as a school teacher, and that's when he teaches. Um, he's not a paid tenant. He's a guest. He's a family member, and we've taken down his signs because he's staying at private. And he occupies a room about the size of this, actually, to teach music. So it's not an official tenant. And where, what room is he in? Okay, so when you take the elevator to the top floor and you come out into the main lobby where you go into our pro shop, there's a hallway. You just walk down the hallway past the restroom to the right, and there's this, there's an area this big, approximately. But it's not in the pro shop? Or it's not in the pro shop. It's in the it's in the, the back. back. It's actually in the middle. It's in the middle. Okay. It's not all the way to the back. The back is a stairwell, and so he's in between the stairwell and my pro and our pro shop. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, if you go back to some of the original special permits, the uh, original parking scheme contemplated that the pavement between the two main buildings would be the site of, of parking. It would have been. It in, should have been if we I used it appropriately for our tenants, but it was never, I've never lent itself to that. So it's never been? Back in the early days it was. When we originally put the tenants in, yeah, we had parking in there. Um, but as it's grown in the part, and the tenants have drifted out um, by attrition, I suppose, because we didn't have a use for, for parking for tenants, it, we, we started to take over the spot. Um, we keep the half of the front half of it very, very clean and neat, uh, we, and uh, we're actually thinking of someday in the future asking uh, the board, if this is in the future, to put a, a, a good-looking gate there so the front is beautified and the back has some security, but that's not for tonight. Uh, we do occupy about half of that back, and we put two rows of motorcycles. It's basically motorcycle parking is what it is, mm -hmm. uh, for, and those are for our guests and our clients who come in for service work generally. Are they available for, for your business invitees, or are they They're both. display? We have both. We have some used motorcycles that we push out for display, and those are our service uh, bikes that are being dropped off and picked up. So it is both, yeah. It's not just gas, not just custom fire, but we actually use that space to display uh, used motorcycles that are for sale. Now, on the um, schematic that yeah. you gave, uh, submitted to the board, uh, are these 10 parking spaces all for customer use? They're all for customer use. Our employees sometimes use one or two throughout the day, those 9 and 10 spots. Yeah. Just because there's, they're available. We, we just, again, out of attrition that we've had. A, and those employees come and go from those spots. If they're not tied up all day. Uh, but the other spots are 100% employee. I'm sorry, 100% customers will coming in. We need them to be. And, just from observation from time to time, uh, it looks like 
spaces, the spaces that are shown as one and two are sometimes uh, occupied by a plow or other service They are. Vehicle. That's uh, Mickey Serendolo again, a cousin of mine. That was a work vehicle for Arlington Tire. It's one of their vehicles. It's not always there. Um, and I think in the winter the, time sometimes there's it, a plow. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's there a lot, let me say that. And um, so, excuse me? It's there today. It isn't there. Is he yeah. selling it? He sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I should. And here I am asking you. Uh, if, uh, if the board wants that out of there, that'll be out of there. Tomorrow well, I, I guess the point of my question is: is if, this is, is this going to be obvious to uh, customers that this is a place for visitor parking? Uh, that particular spot is a is a tenuous one. What I'd like to do someday, and I didn't go into this tonight, is at some point that's going to become like. And I don't want to open up this this can of worms, but I will. Is that we don't have very many handicapped people, and we're not under any handicap real restriction here. But I want that to be for our, for our special needs clients, which we do have a couple, and we make that available for them now. Um, that's not a spot. Um, you're right. Arlington Tire has used that more for them than for our consumers, uh, no question. Uh, but I can easily have that not be. Some like signage, for example, saying this actually I marked them. Uh, something I just recently did uh, a couple of months ago. I took down all the my salon signs and the tenant signs and the mm -hmm. uh, and I put every, I put Arlington Tire and Greater Boston Motorsports signs. Uh, so I will uh, make that uh, customer parking only, which is what I want. Um, With the canopy tent storage. Um, can you describe what that structure looks like? Please? That is a uh, aircraft quality structure designed in Florida. It came from a Chevrolet operation. It's a it's a it's a it has a thirty year lifetime guarantee, thirty year guarantee on the structure. That's about mm, twenty years old, and we've maintained it professionally with some nautical people. So that is a structure that is uh, uh, that keeps some of the overflow storage bikes sound and secure. Number mm -hmm. one. Number two, I was going to clean the tent a lot, but I've let it patine it. The, the, the leaves and so forth have kept it so that it almost looks camouflaged. And we did that for our, our, our um, as another buffer for all of our neighbors in the back. One, they can't see anything now. If it was a big tent, which would be nice, by the way, they would be happy with that. Uh, but now it's, it's a buffer both for visual and for sound. Can they see the structure? I, not very yes. You can see the structure, but it's camouflaged. So as they look out and over to it, it blends with the rest of the uh, area. And how long has the structure been there? Um, probably just a couple of few years. Okay. And I don't recall any it's request like, before the board to allow the structure. It was done with, uh, well, we... Uh, I don't know if it was done officially or unofficially, but at the time, in order to comply and keep neighbors happy and sound and secure and, and have a buffer there and protect some of the merchandise uh, that, was, uh, that was installed uh, through a professional tent company, it was done uh, legitimately. By permit or not? I believe, I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, that was uh, done uh, about a year or so before me, and I'd, I'd have to check on that, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I think we did it with the town's permission because we had got some notice from a couple of neighbors, nothing major, because it was getting, it gets, we, we've grown, and that's part of the issue, and this was part of the uh, helping us absorb some of that growth. It did uh, a nice job protecting the merchandise, buffering the neighbors and visibility. I don't know if it was done with permitting or not, uh, so I'd have to check on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, actually Bruce covered a couple of the things that, you know, I, I look at, but I, I am a little bit confused um, because it's, so on the application on the second page, mm -hmm. um, it talks about minimum or maximum required by zoning for proposed use, and it says minimum 13, and it says proposed conditions proposed is 10. Proposed 10. So, Mike, so you're a three short of the required. In the reason we're here, Mike did some calculations with me as we looked over the site, and that's what I'm here to, uh, that's why I'm here this evening. I'm here for the special permitting. Uh, 
based on single occupancy, based on the fact that we don't need it for our for our customers because they're, I'm going to say, 80% motorcycles. We have the Arlington Tire uh, facility has always had this amount, so we're here tonight to actually request it uh, from that 13 minimum, doing the math to our proposed conditions, which is 10. It's three left, and that's why I'm here this evening. Yeah, and I guess my concern with with the proposal is is exactly what Bruce pointed out, which is the plow here. Yeah, a motorcycle there. Now maybe which, that is one of your uh, clients. It, it is, but it, regardless, yeah. I'm afraid it might be one of yours. And then you say that eight and nine or nine and ten mm -hmm. are also often used by your employees. And I'm being honest with you, they are. And this evening, I will. Uh, tell you that uh, you know, after we leave here this evening, those would be freed up for customers 100% and so will those. Well, but my but the point is on the 9 and the 10, right, yes. on that one, yep. I mean, then they're just going to be parking in the street. So I think it just lends itself to another issue. Well, it, the employees already do park, as we've always done, they, they, they claim their stakes in the morning wherever they can park legitimately. And so... Uh, these are vehicles that are kind of in and out, and they're not like always there. So I wouldn't say they're. Yeah, but we we can 100% free them up so that should always. Be but possible. the problem is, is is the whole purpose of the bylaw with respect to how many is the minimum is to try to relieve street parking and that type of thing due to employee and customer parking. Mm. But everything we've talked about tonight m makes it sound like 10 might not be enough for both employee and customer parking. Because now you've stated that, okay, well, these two are sometimes used for this and these two, so now we're down to, you know, six. Yep. And, you know, it just becomes more and more difficult, I, so. I would uh, not be sitting here this evening if 10 wasn't enough. Uh, we have, and I'm being quite honest with you, that just the course of business, some of these have been used by us. I'm not gonna deny that at all. However, we can very easily, 10, I don't want to say it's more than enough, but it is, is absolutely sufficient for what we need for our consumers. The, the, the vehicle that's there for employee and these other ones are in and out, I, I'm going to say they're not going to affect the neighborhood either. We're going to free up 10 legitimate spots for our, for our single occupancy use. So this is the third or maybe it's even the fourth. I've, I've lost track and I should have kept track. but time that we've talked about this, not, not this application itself, but the building in the past two or three months, mm -hmm. and every single time parking has been both the biggest issue, uh, that and frankly the music. So, um, so from my perspective, it's not the type of thing that, I, well I guess I'm, I'll put it differently, I guess I'm surprised that, there, that there's not a more proactive plan then, well, we'll just have them park in the street. Because it seems to me that the volume of parking is what it is. You haven't expanded the parking within the, within the, um, uh, within the plan. All you've done is just said, okay, this time we mean it, we're only gonna you know, do this thing. And I just don't see where the relief is coming from the neighborhood with respect to parking all around. The three vehicles that we're talking about, the truck mm -hmm. will be removed and won't be there at all. The other two will be, uh, those are uh, in and out employees that are floating managers that I can have, that, that it's, it's, they're not regular employees. So the, the difference is that I will remove that vehicle so that's 100% available. And those vehicles are not. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess once again, I come back to, this isn't really different. It's just you've got kind of a well, different... Single occupancy could be... I didn't need... Well, we don't need uh, with a single occupancy just because it's our motorcycle shop now and the uh, karate studios. All us. I know the last few times, and I wasn't here uh, for those last few meetings, but parking is being addressed, I think, mainly because of what I call the older situation at our building. Our new up-to-date current situation is that we have a, a motorcycle dealership where 80% of our clients are in mo on motorcycles. The reason why things haven't changed too, too much, and the good news, I think, is that we don't have tenants and people coming in and out in automobiles. We just have the same 
conflict of tire situation that's been there forever, even before we owned it, um, which has been always sufficient for the Arlington tire use. A couple of spots that I've added for our GBM customers it was as a really as a courtesy. Um, and the biggie is that we don't have tenants. It's we are just a single motorcycle shop now. Okay. So that's why that area hasn't changed too much. And I'll end with this. The couple of vehicles that I'm being quite honest as to what we use for our I'm gonna say my cousin Nikki who runs Alex Tire, that truck is gone tomorrow morning and the other two will be available and it won't impact the neighborhood. I'll make those ten consumer clearly marked customer parking, which will be it'll be a big improvement for us because of our new situation. Okay. Okay. Um, so and then I moved to this, both the structure in the back as well as is that parked on the sidewalk? Yeah, that's a little plant. It's this a little pad. It is. It's a display pad. Same as what I've done. If you look at this drawing, this is, and is that permitted as well, or is that part of the plan? It's a. I can quickly explain it to you. See this little green arrow coming into the lobby. Back, we used to have a bicycle shop upstairs. If you recall, way back, it was called Life Sports. We have a pad here for bicycles. That's that's a pad. It's just a it's like a display pad. But back then, I used to have bicycles parked there. This it, is, it looks like stairs. It's it's stairs walking in. But to the left, there used to be a bike rack next to a couple of little green. I've marked it slightly green. It's a little pad. Yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to describe the fact that if you can envision a pad where you'd have a bicycle rack and you know to park bicycles in front of that planter where you see that ATV, it's an all-terrain vehicle. There's a pad there. So in the morning, because it lends itself to a display, it, it's, it's, it's an eye catcher. Kind of like Myrak used to put his ATVs out on the lawn when he had them. We don't have a lawn. So we use that pad to display only. But it's on the sidewalk, correct? No, no, it's not. If it is there. The, the vehicle appears to be on the sidewalk. It's half, and in this one, there's one half of the, that wheel. There's that That's our pad. And it is maybe six inches of it over onto the sidewalk in this particular shot. And if, again, if you, that's not, we usually have a scooter there, by the way. Yeah, today there was a yellow scooter that was in the that's sidewalk. That's usually what we put out there. That was in I'm, the sidewalk. That should never be in the sidewalk. Well, it was in this position, but it was overhanging into but the sidewalk. That's not appropriate. There's like a little pad of brick area that, that should always stay there. It shouldn't be on the sidewalk. And then I, I guess I'll just point out from observation. So with respect to the structure, I mean, I'll just give you my feelings on it. Um, and maybe it's proper, maybe it isn't. But I think my wife would kill me if I had one of these in the backyard. Is the she would, but that. your neighbors would like. No, it. I think they'd kill me as well. So, <laughs> well, well, I, so from from that perspective, I mean, you've got kind of a bathroom uh, curtain right there. It looks like the equivalent of it. Cool. And then this is all. I would almost wonder whether that's a little bit moldy. It's uh, so, I mean, it looks like black mold. I don't know what it it's, is, it's so, but camo, patina. It's patina. I, I, I think, it, I think I'd, I'd want to do a biology check on the patina there, because <laughs> that's, you know, copper uh, it has a nice patina that goes to green. That's, this is it's from white the, going to black. It's from the uh, leaves that no, have gone on it. We used to clean it, but because the neighbors uh, uh, noticed that it's less noticeable, from their perspective, we kept it. I yeah, can, I guess I'd also want to know that that was permitted because it is a structure, it is on Mass Ave, and it is subject to all the EDR stuff with respect to it. So, I, you know, I think. I think I, Carol can add to that. Yeah. I so. just should, should inform the board and Mr. Sarandolo, I've done a thorough search of the files. I found no mention of the canopy. Hmm. It doesn't mean it wasn't presented, but um, I do have quite a bit of. Material we have a, we have a long in this box for these 30 years of permitting, and I, I have not come across it. I did hmm. look, so we can look at that. That's helpful, and 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 I think I want to I, I want to point out I. I think it's a great business for Arlington. It's great business for Mass Ave. I want you to thrive, and I'm glad that you are. It's it's just very dense right now, and frankly, it's. I'll give you my own impression as I go by. I, I live up behind there. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's just a little bit unwieldy, um, among other things. And I, and I don't live very close. But as you go by, there's a lot going on. And, um, you know, we do have the different special permits. So, so that's, that's kind of 
my my take on. I could it. speak to one uh, yeah, thing that please. will relieve some of this. Michael and I have had conversations about our future plans there. Uh, number one, putting the pro shop upstairs has given us some growth. We of course purchased the 1092 Mass Ave old uh, Armand Cleaners building, which we've renovated into a actually going through another renovation with BMW. It's going to be a very beautiful state of the art BMW building, but that's a, a separate situation. It's not going to give us more space. The good news, and more good news, is that the Allington Tire operation is a is a tenant. At, uh, I won't say tenant at will, but he has a lease. And then come January, we're hoping. Uh, this is the good news that we're, we're expecting him not to renew his lease. If that happens, what I have is uh, the whole entire Island entire building that you see there, which will alleviate a lot of what I'll call that European chaos that you see going on. What's, what's happened is that 22% of the motorcycle businesses in New England have gone out of business for a lot of reasons. Uh, we're not, uh, I wouldn't say thriving, we're a small business, even though we're taking on a lot, we have a lot of employees, a lot of overhead is a lot. Uh, we, we love what we do, luckily, and we've been in business long enough that we do a very good job at it. So the good news, the reason why you're seeing it a little unlearnedly, yes, we've grown, we've grown, um, but we do need more space. And the good, so two things can happen. One, I could thin that hurt a little bit, which I don't really want to do because it's basically like that for 90 days. If you go back and come even next month, you're going to see a much different GVM, much. But the future is that we're go looking to hope, and I'll keep the board abreast of all of this, uh, to move into the Allen Tire space. I don't expect to make that a retail space. I just need raw storage space is what I need. So that will alleviate my in-season I'll call it chaos, organized chaos. That's the hope. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'd feel more comfortable, put it that way, if if you had certainty on that and that what you were telling me is that whatever's going on in the I, in the patinaed uh, canvas uh, area was going to move over here. That would certainly make me feel better about the whole I situation. Give you nine. Sitting here this evening, I don't want to say January 1st he's going to leave, but I'm going to tell the board as honestly as I can that we're about 99% sure. I don't want to promise you something that I, I uh, can't tell you. The timing isn't quite right. Um, you know, I don't want to overstep mm -hmm. my bounds yeah. there. But yeah. I, will, uh, I will inform the board, Carol and Michael and, and yourself, uh, uh, as soon as I know, which will be in the next couple of months. And again, let me say this to uh, Michael, uh, what you're looking at there, I mean, even now as we're speaking, I'm starting to switch gears, there will be 30, maybe even, well, I'm going to say about 30% less uh, display merchandising, and there's going to be about 70% less service. It's going to go back to a very calm, cool, so, clean facility. So let me ask the, this question then. I, maybe this is this is where I'm, uh, I'm not quite connecting the dots. If, if if the, the herd does get thinned for all but the three or four months, why is the canvas necessary? Because one would think that, you know, during the nice weather is, is when you would really have to use that. And you can move everything out. I'll say two things. One, it's necessary because of the unbelievable amount of influx that we had. So we need a nice corralled area to keep everything packaged so okay. that it would be neater. If it didn't have that, it would, it would look worse. And it would be less buffered. And it would be a little bit more obtrusive to some of the neighbors. As ugly as that thing is, it's better looking than of a lot of motorcycles in, in the backyard. But I can also say this with some certainty, I'm not going to really need that tent, I, and I'm shooting myself in the foot here because I would really I love having it there just for that extra breathing space, but if and when I do get Arlington Tire, I really don't want that tent there either, Michael. It's not aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Okay, and I, I'm with you on that, but it's a necessity. We're looking, that's a functional thing, not a fashionable thing right now. So if I do get Arlington Tire, I don't really want the tent, even though I want it, but if I had to sacrifice that, I, I would, if it makes the board happy and keep it neater. I would, I, might, I would much rather have a much neater, cleaner, much more peeling area. And I think having that island entire space uh, would assist uh, me a lot, greatly. The other thing that assisted me uh, is when, if the economy goes bad again. 
three or four years ago, I wouldn't no. be sitting here. We're not looking I, for that. Well, so no, I'll tell is. you, I didn't need that. I put the tent in because the economy rebounded. Motorcycle stores went out of business all over New England. All of a sudden, I'm influx with extra business and extra employees. I got a little weight, and it's not as lucrative. It's not. I wish the profitability was there. We did okay. We're growing, but we're not. You know, it's small incremental growth. So that's you're looking at. Uh, the result of a little a little uptick in the economy is what happened to me. Uh, I survived the uh, fall, uh, if you will, of the economy. And we picked up some extra clients who had, they were orphans. Uh, they needed a place to go to have their service done. Mike, do you have more? No, I'm done. Thanks. Oh, sorry, are we allowed to participate? I haven't I'll been. Sorry, the board's going to go Thank around and, and ask we'll questions first, then we're going to open it up to the public. I guess I have two issues. Haven't been mentioned already. One is the consistent use of Mass Ave as display space, the parking space alongside Mass Ave. Absolutely addressed. It's not happening since my conversation with Officer Corey, and <clears throat> was never happening for our own motorcycles being displayed for sale. What we were doing, and I'm an honest engine here, we would stage a couple of our clients' motorcycles who would be coming down in an hour or two to pick up their bikes, so we'd have them ready for them. Mm -hmm. Registered, insured motorcycles. And I, I've driven by there every day for however many years, and I've seen motorcycles there, I've seen jet skis there, I've seen unhitched trailers. Even uh, today, on, there on were two trailers, every, two trailers and out. two motorcycles on Mass Ave. Today at 315. Dropping them, dropping off vehicles and Parked. so forth? Parked. For how long? Not more than an hour. I definitely not more than an hour. Certainly seems an they're, unhitched they're trailer seems time, like it would so be there longer than an hour. An unhitched trail, trailer loaded with jet skis. On mass, I saw a few times over the summer. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to deny that. If it happened, it happened. Absolutely. Again, that's about a 30 to 60 day window with the jet ski situation. Yeah. Um, again, a conversation for another day. But one of the things not for today is one of our proposals in the future once we get settled was to put. Uh, a proposed uh, a loading zone area out front, but that's mm -hmm. not for this board, and it's a separate situation. Okay. What we will be doing, though, and I can say very honestly about this, once Allington Tire, well, two things, actually. Once the Allington Tire operation moves and I have that spot, there's my loading area. Second, right. we have a new service manager who just started Nils. He's a 20-year veteran. He was our old service manager, wonderful man. We are going to make a loading, or an official loading area here in the driveway. Mm -hmm. The guys are just doing that for convenience, quick in and out. It's never more than an hour, and if I, if the, I, I can't say that anyone in this room, I know I will say that there's never anything out there for more than an hour. If it is, uh, I'd like to know about it. But it could take upwards of 30 minutes to an hour to load and unload a vehicle for customers. It could also be customers of ours sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, do this, they drop them off. It's a, it's a okay. lot of that control I've seen it. Chaos. I've seen it times where it's pretty obvious that the guys that are working there are showing off the bikes that are parked on that set. Showing off. Looks well, like they're there for they sale do. display. And, and not only on Mass Ave itself, but on the sidewalk as well. Like Michael brought up with the ATV and um, scooter out on the sidewalk. It looks like they're taking up a lot more space than yeah. they need to be. It mm -hmm. should be. And I hate to mention, but mm -hmm. Boston Motorsports was on the door. What's that? Of, of the vehicles. Boston Motorsports was written on the door of both of the vehicles that had trailers okay. on them today. So those are our transportation. Yeah, those are our trucks. Yeah. Okay. One of the other things that some residents of the area have brought up to us is employee parking, customer parking, clogging up Quincy Street, blocking driveways. There's a school, there's a middle school up there, yeah. making it difficult for kids in the morning for buses to get by. I think buses can't get by. If, if parking is going away, here and we're still three spaces less than is required. This is approved. But where do those people go? They're still blocking the street there. One of the things I can do to instantly cure this is have all my employees not park there. There's about mm -hmm. a half a dozen or so, and we can find another place if it's even much more. So where do they park now? More questions to be, ask. You know, they are probably parking right around that facility. They mm -hmm. claim their stake in the morning. Usually the, uh, I don't know the street, but the one that's uh, parallel. Yeah, yeah. Is that you guys? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. And I guess finally, we touched on this a little bit, but we've had a lot of complaints about the noise coming out of the music studio. 
And I know you said it's changed as a teacher in there. Yes. How long has he been in there? A while. Probably a couple of years. What we've heard, and I don't know what the soundproofing situation is there, where the windows are open, but some of the abutters have mentioned to us that it sounds like there's a full band rehearsing in there. And I know how loud that can get. That yeah. can get, yeah. That's going to really disturb the neighbors quite a bit. And do you know what the soundproofing situation yeah, is? Yeah, it was all professionally soundproof. That uh, I'm not a soundproofer, but they put all that big, thick, uh, you know, styrofoam soundproofing on the inside. Get your money back. Yeah, this is so good. <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah, you know, that's another thing points. I'm going to say to the to board and to the neighbors up there here. If that's an issue, uh, um, he's got to go if it's an issue. I'm not going to overly defend him. Uh, it's a family relative. You know, From my own personal experience, I know the difference between less in volume, which isn't going to disturb anybody, yeah. and band volume. They probably do just practice disturb in the there. Entire neighborhood. They may practice in there as well. I'm not 100% sure. It's mostly lessons from what I understood, but yeah. if he's practicing in there, and if it's a problem to the neighbors, uh, I guess one thing I'll suggest is if there's a, a one final warning, uh, and then if, it's, uh, if you're not happy, uh, he's gone and, and, uh, instantly. Mm -hmm. So okay. I don't want that to be an issue uh, for <clears throat> anyone, certainly the neighbors don't well, want I think it's been an ongoing issue from yeah. some of the residents to tell us. Yes. So, yeah. is it, how is it weekly or is it monthly? Once a month or once Monday a week? Monday nights. Monday night, oh, Monday nights. Monday nights. I can't go to bed before you, 10 o'clock you know because what? I can feel the bass in my bedroom floor. <clears throat> so then I'm going to think on a Monday nights, he's not there anymore. Uh, effective immediately. If it is just the Monday night, the other ones, if he's just doing quiet lessons, I think it should be okay. Mm -hmm. But no band and no, I, that's totally understood. And, uh, I want no warning on that one. That's uh, one more strike on he's out. I'm just throwing that out there. That's mm -hmm. it for me. Thank you. Andrew. So I'll try to make it quick because <coughs> most of the points have been covered. But um, So um, what you got in there is you got karate, and you got your your big business on two floors. Yes. And you got um, Arlington Tire. Very slowly, not that active Arlington Tire, but yes. And that, and that, those three amount to ten, thirteen spaces. Thirteen, because of this, because we have one owner. Actually, Arlington Tire too is owner residency. That's <coughs> us, but we'll call it a separate business. We we own the facility, not the, the business. But okay, the way we calculated, Mike and I uh, calculated that the, the building itself is just us, second floor, first floor, just the GBM. Right. The karate studio doesn't have, they never had parking, they don't use parking. They but never the, needed, they just drop off and pick up. But they, aren't they required to have a parking spot? That spot up there was always just one big open spot for the last 10 years. They may have been required uh, but they don't have separate offices. When we built that, <coughs> this structure, it was required that we had whatever it was, I think it was 31 parking spots because there was a different amount of offices in there, six, six of them. But doesn't karate require a spot or two? They didn't, uh, as far as I know, and we <coughs> didn't see any record of a spot. I don't or know off the top of my head. I can check the bylaw. I have it here. They, they don't have an as a tenant, they were never assigned any uh, parking, and they never needed any parking. We never, I guess. So I'd like to know what they require. Okay. And then how many do you require for, for your space? You mean with the, for the bylaws of the yeah. town? When Mike did his calculations and he said, Rob, bring this piece of paper, he did his calculations here. Yeah. Yeah. And he came up with, I don't have, you know, I can't read he all does the overall. He did the overall, and what he asked, what he actually calculated it out, he actually put this in. That's Mike? Yes, that's Mike. He put the 13 after he, he looked at Mike each. Burr, right? Yes, Mike Burr. And he calculated, based on the square footage, that 13 would be the amount that we would be uh, uh, sufficient. What's this? 21. President. That's what that's what it was. The that's what it is. That's what it's that's supposed what it to be. That's what it's supposed to be. But it never was. And so you're saying it, it never was, except for maybe those first early years. And how many does Arlington Tire need? How many does Arlington Tire need? As per the bylaw. I think it's both buildings. See, it's 1098 and 1100. If you, you look at the application, them? yeah, see right here. So it's 1098 and 1100. The present condition is 21. I see. 
uh, the required so for gonna, all of the tenants. So he's piling person. it all together. Piling it all together. Just doing it as a square footage. Okay. Right. Right. So that's right. Michael. So it's yeah. 13 by the bylaw. 13 by the bylaw, 21 by the special permit, the request is okay. there. And just to alleviate any confusion, the number of 10 that's being bounced around is in reference to our board is able to reduce 13 to 10 by using uh, 8.12A. Right. Item 11, we can make a 20% reduction if yeah. we you, see I, that it is so warranted. Okay. Right. And so that was our, uh, that, thank you for reminding me of that. We found that in the bylaws. So let me just kind of reiterate or just emphasize points. Um, the, bu the, the, uh, the buffer area, the, the area that's got the stuff parked in it with the brick patio or whatever you call it, pad. Yes. You, you got to get stuff out of there. You, you yeah. got to maintain that. I mean, this front area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's no, but I mean, there has to be a way that you, you know, I like your actually your idea of the gates, of some little, you know, even if it's decorative, I, that establishes a, a sidewalk line. I was even going to. Well, I didn't want to be so aggressive, but gee whiz, it's the, I, I didn't want to be that aggressive to put a gate here, but I would love to, to be honest. I was going to put it halfway. To well, let's keep this all the, clean and clear, to be honest. Maybe, maybe, would, maybe so. But the, what the point is, to, for another because it's going to be half in and half out, no matter what, you've got to find a way to actually make that function. Because if you have a yeah. little four, five foot zone, you're going to end up parking wider vehicles in there. You just are. Yes. Human nature. So yes. you've got to figure out either you, it, you just got to prohibit it so that people park yes. on the inside. So you don't have that spill of. Done. That has to be a condition. I, I, I can have You this. can design it better or you can just Two things. One, we better. can just put it as a condition and legislate it. Two, I would uh, <coughs> request that I might, uh, with the board's permission, come back and uh, apply to put a, a nice gate there. That way it can't happen. Or the little sides that, that establish Yep. It. Then, then the next one is marked. Um, so you said in the big lot that used to be where all the, the spots were. You have motorcycle display, you have service people coming in and yes. dropping off, yes. and then you have motorcycle parking. Yes. People coming that are... Generally for, for that service, that are, most uh, of our motorcycle clients that are in or out will park right in front. There is they park, park in front. There is parking out there, yes. Well, there's parking in front, but that's the, that's the regular parking places for the town. Right. Those aren't your spots. They're not my spots. Right. No, no, no. So what I'm saying is, would you be willing to provide if you're <laughs> if you're coming by motorcycle to visit to, 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 to visit you, yeah, could you provide motorcycle spots that are designated inside the lot? Yes, if you're I creating could. a zone, yeah, a buffer zone, yeah. at least get those out of there. I could, and then you, you, you won't ever have them parking in these spots, which will make these automobile spots. Right. Maybe that if you park your if you provide. Yes, motorcycle visitor, special. Visitor motorcycle parking. Right inside the lot, yeah. That's my Another thing I was going to do in the future, but one of the other proposals, uh, and again, I don't want to go on here, but we also had, being very proactive in Boston and European life, uh, having motorcycle parking, since we have such a... Oh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. But I'm talking about rather than automobile, because in Europe, you'll see designated right. motorcycle parking. Isn't, isn't that outside of this? It is. Are you talking okay. about on street yeah. or on yeah. your lot? On, on street. street. That's outside of this. That's not for this meeting, yeah. but uh, in the, so amazing. that's another situation. But so to answer your question, I can easily condition. provide okay, so some buffer, relief inside. So buffer and maintaining, or what I'm saying is maintaining that line. Yep. So motorcycle parking. Yep. That you actually advertise. Park, park yep. here. I would actually paint it so they'll very right. clearly say customers. But motorcycle parking. Yes. Then um, your bike pad area that used to be a bike pad and that's a bike, not a bike pad. That's I, I, I'm using a reference there on pad. There's a small pad area. Oh, over there? That's still open. I don't or some place that you put bicycle parking, believe it or not. Oh. You're required to because it's a part of your... Oh, no kidding. That's why we put it there. Yeah, okay, oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I can, uh, it, it, it's still there. Okay. So I, I, would, I would establish that. Yep, the bike pad, yep. And then again, what Bruce said, or someone said about getting that plow out of there. That will be out mm -hmm. in the morning. Um, your, your, um, your idea of providing, of not having custom, um, employee parking, if there's a way to do it, and I don't know if that turns out to be parking in the neighborhood, which is yeah. just as bad. 
because then their all their spots are all crammed up. But I don't know. That's always a, an issue because yeah. you come to a business and suddenly there are three trucks right in the middle and you just don't go there. It's for your own Indeed. good. Yep. I don't know how you do that. You'd have to designate in public parking zones for them to have to walk from the public parking zone. Right. That's what I would do. We do it in some of our I don't offices. know if we can make that a condition, but uh, you can endeavor to just go uh, Point of curiosity, and Andy, I don't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. No, no, no. But I guess I am. Um, how many of your employees commute by motorcycle? Uh, half, maybe a little more than that. Okay. And we have about six to eight in season, maybe ten. Uh, that might be in an automobile, but off season, uh, it's down to six again. So okay. it's not, we don't have many uh, driving. Where, where do they uh, play? In, in, the, in the lot? No, no, we, uh, they're probably in and around the neighborhood. Well, I'll let Andy continue on with what he was saying. I think he's on to something with well, the idea. I'd of like some help on that because I know we've talked well, about that before. And, you know, obviously we want to hear from the public too, but, you know, and I'm all about so finding a solution. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the history, candidly, has not been very good, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think, say positive and think about how this could work. Reducing from 13 to 10 is a power that the board has within our discretion. Usually that's coupled with seeing some form of mitigation from the property owner that makes us feel like, oh, this is appropriate to give that reduction. But we're not obligated to go to 10. We could hold you to 13. Indeed. What In the mitigation, just to jump in, is that we're just a motorcycle shop now. We don't have all that other need, but go ahead. So thinking along those lines, if you were to take the some portion of this apron area between the two buildings, mm -hmm. the front half, I would suppose, and designate those as parking spaces. You could get to 13, and those could be designated as motorcycle parking spaces yes. for your motorcycle staff. driving customers and, and staff. staff. Okay. But I think it would have to be clear that it's not a display area okay. or a service area. I think that's something that, uh, along the lines of what Andy was suggesting, okay. and then you know perhaps the gate idea might designate where the visitor yep. parking is and where the yep. display and service area is behind it. Um, yeah, so that's, I, I just so agree. I, I like the idea. Okay. It would help. Yeah, and, you know, all that, of us. Yeah. Okay. So that that's that's a good way to go about that, and then. Um, and then uh, the uh, Arlington Tire uh, dumpster. Yes. Uh, I would like to see you screen that. Uh, that's my. Uh, it's screened right now. It has a fence. It's maybe a little decrepit. Is it need updating? Oh man. I have some pictures. That's, it is screened. Yeah, that's, is it? that's a fence. But I, 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 I believe it may need some, some it, updating. It could be a uh, fresh. Did you make it a green fence or sure. lattice work or something oh, that yes. looks like Yeah, that's uh, probably, it's, it's 1991 uh, and what is paneling. It's, and it, so it shouldn't, okay, well that, that's, I can, I'll keep that. I can uh, beautify that or freshen it up. I, I, that's, okay. then, then the music, what we talked about, which I think that's a great idea that yeah. it's got to be lessened, it's got to be turned out so that it's no band something's practices. happening in there that's apparently Monday night yeah. so that's, but that has that's to be gonna, somehow written in so that we can okay. we can monitor that so that if it happens again it, it, it doesn't happen again I think we have a volunteer monitor well I'm they're kidding, not responsible I, for monitoring no no they're that. not I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kidding uh, I can say that but uh, then, that, that'll end uh, those, so those are those are easy the two big things, really, the, the patina the elephant in the room is the special is the uh, non-permitted tent. That one, we need to have a permit on that. We, you need to come in and propose a structure there. That's what. If we have. haven't and I it wasn't done um, officially, because uh, I know it was done unofficially, we were there was a, a little bit of a request as we grew and. Uh, contained, but we can number one apply if we haven't. But number two, I'll remove it if need be immediately. I'd rather have us have a little time to move it January 
first or second. What would you do with that, that site? It, it's a piece of your, It's a part of your. Site. I would have it just a nice little uh, structure here. Those are my clients' motorcycles. That's what it is. We we work. I don't even want to tell you. If you, I mean, I'm just wondering if you could build something there that's flat and lower than the fence, or maybe it's, it's maybe it's low enough that it's not disturbing. It's sticking up where they can the, see it from behind. Yeah, used right to be parking. Yeah. Used Quite a bit of parking. Yeah, yeah. used ten, to. Ten spaces on this side. Yeah, here. which was never officially used. Is that used solely for storage, or is there work both. that's done in there? It's both. It's a little bit of both. Mostly uh, work, and then some full of full storage. Okay. That should be... We, we keep it neat. I think that should be printed, or you should remove it. So we will do a one or the other, absolutely. If it's not already permitted, if it's not on file, we will apply. Uh, but I'm not going to say temporarily because I'd like to. I'd like to remove it uh, someday. I don't. You know, I'd rather go inside of the the Island Tire Building. That's give me enough space. And then, so you uh, say January first or second for the Island Tire Building. But if you're going to use that for storage, aren't you going to have to do some sort of rehabilitation? there to make it suitable for storage? I will. I say that I'll know by that time. I can have that gutted and done within the month. I Is much. that your option or theirs? It would be their option. If they do not really renew their option, I'm going to know. Uh, so uh, they have an option. They have. Uh, they are required to uh, renew their lease. I have an option to. If they want to break their lease, I'm going to allow them to break their lease. Their renewal is once every five years, and it's coming up this January. So that's the and question. I, and the tire store is getting to a point where it's, they're doing less than half of the business. I'm going to say 40 or 30 percent of the business they were. It's very low and slow in there right now. So, Christine, I'm just wondering to come back to that maybe how you would implement as a condition the fact that we need this yeah. incomplete special permit without the tent and the signage. Yeah, right now the, the tent appears to be in violation of setbacks extremely. You know, we looked at the setback. The rear setback should be 10 feet plus the length of the structure divided by 10, which makes it just guessing and based on that length being 92 feet on past plans with 15 foot, seven and a half foot on each side. We're looking at an 18 foot rear setback. You know, just looking at the scale of that, it doesn't look like you have even the 10 foot maybe set back. It's about 10, that probably. There's a pretty wide buffer there. So um, it's about 10, but it least. appears that it should be more like 18. Um, That's why we need a proposal for that that we could either look at and say. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that and the sign. If it's going to remain, it needs to it, be permitted. So that's a question. And I don't think it would be permitted unless we waived the setbacks. I don't know that the board is empowered to wear the setbacks. Uh huh. <laughs> so that, that's, that's maybe to come back to that of how you. Yeah, you do and, and the same thing with the parking. I think we should also see if it isn't because uh, when we had that installed, we had it professionally done. I thought that we went in front of the committee, we didn't go in front of the board, but I thought we had permission to do that. If we didn't, we will apply, and if it needs to be an application and approved, fine, or I'll remove it. I, th I think you will probably end up removing it because I don't think you could so I squeeze it in there. And it seems to be a good location for some additional parking if we need it. I'm I'm also concerned about parking space number ten and parking space uh, number two. Right now, parking space number ten exists, but it's right against the sidewalk. Nine and ten have always been there. Those are right. Two. It's it's no nine and ten. I don't know if they've always been there. Yeah. Two large designated spots. You know, on your on your original plan, I don't know what year this is. This is the plan that came through with the Verizon mm -hmm. um, application, which we're going to hear next. Yep. Um, you had one bicycle rack here instead of two parking spaces. You had two spaces here instead of three. So I'm not sure how you're going to fit a third one in unless this. you've already expanded this planter. You had yeah. two spaces here. Right now, you're using. Three actually. You have a piece of equipment sitting here. You have a storage, mm -hmm. like U-Haul type storage the, container here, and you have one space open. Even though both have signs that, that they're for customers those only. Those two spots have always been there. If there's another 
you haul it and it shouldn't be technically just being used as such. Well, technically, you would need a five foot setback. Mm -hmm. You would need 10 foot on the front unless you have a wall, and you can go down to five foot from what I was reading in the, the ordinance. On the side, you would need mm -hmm. five foot. Now, if these were previously approved on previous permits, this one maybe is already a pre existing situation. And but the, the front this plan only been, shows two here. It's so. always had three from my original drawings. I thought, why? I, that's the first time I've seen two in the front there, like ever. Is, is that your, your dumpster? I think. Yes, that's belongs to that. We all share that boat building. Because yeah. if you didn't have the tent, I mean, I don't know if it's possible to put that dumpster back, back here. We could. And then open up two more spots, which we, looks like. You know, we could. We could if it could fit. They could fit in here. Get rid of these entirely. Get rid of these. Those are very, those are very useful. Oh, I know. I'm saying put them right here. Oh. That dumpster over here. Oh, but then you've got that dumpster right next to the. Uh, my other my other observation yeah, yeah, uh, books, you're not you're not using your curb cut where you're proposing to put the gate where you have all your motorcycles mm -hmm. in between the buildings mm -hmm. you have a wide curb cut there because that used to be a driveway where you had parallel parking for me mm -hmm. if that curb cut is no longer necessary it may be that it could disappear and on street parking well, could I think reappear that's what we're talking about putting the in that area. motorcycles in the front of that. Yeah, no, but if that's no, we're trying to get access. access. There's, there's motorcycles going in. We're trying to keep access there. Mm -hmm. For motorcycles to go in and out. Yeah, and they have service vehicles that go in there. It, it, what's happening is you're using the back of it always for your own. Yes. Yeah, so that hasn't changed in the lease so far. Yeah, Otherwise, it would go back to the parking lot. Well, it, maybe let's hear from. Yeah, yeah. Some of our abettors now, so um, we could just maybe go in order if that's okay with everybody. And um, what I'd like you to do is before you ask your comment, um, I want you to be addressing the board, not mm -hmm. the applicant, mm -hmm. and state your your name and your address for the minutes. Mm -hmm. For the minutes, do you want me to stand up or you can sit? Okay. All right, my name is Brenda Hibbard, H-I-B-B-A-R-D. I live at 17 Higgins Street, and I do abut directly Great right Boston Motorsports. Um, somebody said it, but the music has been addressed. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, in addition to parking, there are tires in the back that abut our fence. Throw a match out there. There you go. Um, Parking on the street is, it's an issue because they park on, they park on Higgins Street, um, and not necessarily one behind the other, sometimes it's side by side, you know, across from each other. And people don't always use their brains when they park across from each other because you can barely fit a car down the street. Um, first, I want to say most of the people that, that work at Greater Boston Motorsports are good people. It's not them that we have the issues with so much. Um, it's just, and we appreciate the fact that they come around and they clear the sidewalks. That's very good. I'm just going to let you know that. Um, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. But if the parking is a, is a huge thing and the, the tires, and that sort of general disregard, it seems, um, for the neighbors. Um, I understand the whole tent thing, wanting to protect your merchandise. I get it. I understand that. And motorcycles are loud no matter what you do. We're used to the, the noise during the day. It is what, that is what it is. But sometimes after, later in the evening, it gets a little bit annoying. But, um... I'm sure my other neighbors have things to say too. Excuse There's me. more. Uh, just, uh, okay, Mike has a good point. Um, are people here for the next hearing that was supposed to start at 7.30 since we're running so far over? Well, the applicant, yeah. The applicant yeah. is here. Yeah. Um, are you okay with... Oh, absolutely. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. For the team over. The, oh, for the T-Mobile that was going to um, intended to withdraw. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I see what you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, we, we haven't seen T-Mobile no, yet. No, it I looks think. like they're not here. It's not yes. So, so yeah, yeah. So it looks let like them, they are let withdrawing. Them go. I can give you a call if you want to, but you know what I learned this morning. Yeah, no, I, just, okay. I meant to do it before sorry. we started. Sorry, because I the next step. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted four people to leave. Really 
Okay, my name is Nancy Savioli. I live at 24 Hedrick Street. I've lived there for 37 years, and um, the parking has become an increasing problem year after year, both from the Greater Boston Motorsports and the tired people. They park uh, on Quincy Street, they park on Higgins Street, they park on Robbins Road. Um, it's there from morning to night. A Greater Boston Motor Sports employee parked in front of my neighbor's house, left his car there for a week. Unattended, just left it like it was a parking lot. Um, the fact is, of course it's irritating paying the taxes we do and not being able to park in front of your own house, but it's a safety issue. My neighbor next door's father was bedridden for six years, and on several occasions the emergency vehicles could not get down the street because of the parking. Now, as Brenda said, when people park their cars, they just get out and walk away. They don't look at the other side and the fact that there's not a lot of room. The uh, motorcycle um, shop gives uh, a customer their motorcycle back and they test drive it on Higgins Street. When someone leaves the shop, they go up Quincy Street as fast as they can. It's very loud. It's, you know, we, we've had babies that, you know, have sleep, sleep disrupted because of the noise. Um, they do uh, do the sidewalk around Brenda's block, mm -hmm. but not mine, and I don't care. I have my snowblower, <laughs> it's fine. That's not why I'm saying this, okay? Um, and as I said, sometimes, you know, kids will work at the Boston Motorsports in the tire place, leave their vehicle, go off with their friends, and they'll drop them off at 10, 11 o'clock at night to pick up their vehicle. It's like a parking lot for your employees. Not your customers, your employees. We never get a break, okay? Along Mass Ave, there are signs, two-hour limit. That's it. We don't get a break, okay? The only break we get are on Sundays when your businesses are closed. But the safety concern really is an issue. Thank you. Hi, my name is Norman Magnuson. I live at 12 Hagen Street. Last name is M-A-G-N-U-S-O-N. Been a resident there and a property owner for 30 years. Um, and with the increase in size of Boston, uh, Greater Boston Motorsports, uh, along with what Nancy and Brenda are talking about the parking, not only the employees' vehicles, but the Greater Boston Motorsports trucks uh, with the trailers attached to them, sometimes the trailers without being attached to the vehicles parked on Higgins Street, uh, loading, of the, loading of the trailers with motorcycles on Higgins Street, and there have been several times I have had to call the police uh, because I don't feel that an emergency vehicle can fit down Baker Street, uh, which is a fact. They also park on the corners, especially on Higgins and, Quin and Quincy Street. Uh, they'll pull the trailer and the truck right on the corner of the street, which along with the people from Jimmy's that park there and everything else, it's, uh, I don't think sometimes an emergency vehicle or a plow in the winter time uh, can get up Quincy Street many times. Uh, the other issue that I have uh, in the proposed parking area is the repair of the motorcycles and the revving up of the motorcycles. It's definitely much louder than the general noise in the neighborhood, which is considered disturbing the peace. I understand that it needs to be done, but um, the revving of the motorcycles is constant sometimes, constant. And my final thing is the test driving of the motorcycles up Quincy Street, and I'm sorry, up Robbins Road. You can hear them all the way to the top of Robbins Road and uh, obviously way over the speed limit. Uh, I, think, I think I've covered just about everything, if not my wife will cover the rest. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, uh, my name is Diane Magnuson. I also live at 12 Hagen Street. 
I've actually lived in that house for over 50 years. I grew up in it, so I know that neighborhood. I know what was there before Boston Motorsports was there. Um, to what my husband said around the, uh, the noise level has definitely increased the revving of the motorcycles. Um, the test driving and the racing up, and it's those scooter, the different types of motorcycles, but usually it's the ones where they're hunched over. They race up Robbins Road, which is a steep hill, all the way up to Gray Street, and you can hear, hear it all the way up to Gray Street. They, they race through our street. On many occasions, without helmets, they test drive up and down our street without helmets. The truck, uh, there's, there's two trucks that have trailers. One of them is, is gray and white or white and red, but um, they fly through the street about 7 o'clock at night. And I'm assuming it's when motorsports is closed, or when they've just closed, and whoever it is, it is. They come racing down that street. They have, um, can't be proven, but the assumption is that it was that truck that uh, knocked the, wind, the mirror off my daughter's car. Also, they park the truck and the trailer on one side of Robbins, on one side of Higgins Street all the time. And um, again, I, I don't know your personnel, but um, she happened to park in the spot where the truck usually was, or the trucks usually were, and came out one day and had um, a cup of coffee poured all over her car. So I don't know who can't blame it, but I'm just, you know, it was an assumption. The other thing is that the, you have the karate school and you say that they have no designated parking, but the customers for the karate school park on our streets, park on Robbins and Quincy and Higgins Street. They leave their car there for an hour to two hours while they walk their kids over in their karate gear to watch them. So they do need parking or they need something. They don't just drop off. They do stay and they block on our street. You come through on a, um, during the day or on a Saturday, Emergency vehicles would not be able to get down Higgins Street because it's side to side all the way down. Um, there are times when your trucks are also parked up on the sidewalk. They pull it up onto the sidewalk of uh, on Higgins Street. So they're pulled away out of the street, but then now they're sitting up on the sidewalk. Um, in terms of the, um, the, they do go around in the winter time. I have seen them with their snow blowers, and they blow. They do that other side of the sidewalk on Higgins Street, um, but I think that's a small, uh, you know, show of something. I'm not quite sure because overall it's um, it's very distracting. So. I'd just like to add one more thing. I think that if they were to take over Arlington Tire, that would be the place to do their maintenance so they weren't outside revving up motorcycles. So the noises you hear, sorry, but are, are they coming from the tent? Well, in that tent area? Yeah, in that tent area. Yeah. I, my porch looks right okay, over the tent. No, I just, I just so wanted to understand. I mean, it's deafening. You can't even hear okay. You can't have a conversation. With and the tent is the storage area, but there's outside where they where they also work on them because we can hear the air guns and mm -hmm. whatever they're doing with the, with the bikes. Okay. Sure, Ed County. I live on. Oh. Hi. Um, Higgins Street also, uh, 26, and I've lived there about uh, 20 years, and I just want to support my fellow neighbors here about in uh, about the parking uh, situation. But another point of interest is that that we are uh, we are witnessing four places that, that are in need of our parking. Okay, two of the places is your property, which is the uh, motorcycle staff. Another one is the uh, karate school, because I live on the corner of uh, Quincy, and the entire left side of the uh, Quincy Street is either the karate school or it's Jimmy's, or it's a few of the cars that are coming out of the motor <coughs> station that, uh, that are repaired. Norman mentioned they're parking across the uh, corner. Well, that's where the wheelchair ramp is, at the corner of the street. So you go around uh, that there, you continue on the sidewalk towards Mass Ave, and there's a car parked on the sidewalk right beside the parking lot to the entire place. If that's not there, sometime on occasion, it's a tool truck. It's one of those, um, I'm not gonna call it a snap-on uh, tools, but it's one of the other uh, um, uh, suppliers. I don't know the name of it. But the parking is, her right in that little area there, 
I'd say in the past uh, five or six years has uh, doubled at least. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Any other letters? Yes, um, my name is Andrew Cothel, Mother Andrew. Uh, I live in uh, the Cutter School, which is between Robbins Road and School Street, as many of you may know. I don't have much to add to what other people have said, uh, other than to emphasize the fact that the noise factor from the revving of the motorcycles is really intrusive. Um, the disregarding of basic rules about parking on Mass Ave, including having trucks that are already too wide to park on Mass Ave, off from the curb and thereby making traveling down Mass Ave both by car and by bicycle particularly difficult. Having trucks parked at the base of Robbins Road leading into Mass Ave where there's a no parking from here to the corner makes it almost impossible to come off Mass Ave and make a right turn onto Robbins Road and have any visibility unless you're riding in a high vehicle. It's quite dangerous. I not only ride a car but I also ride a bicycle. So that becomes a problem. I want to go back to something Mr. Fissimmons said, though. Let's, I want to say something constructive, and that is all these ideas are coming out. It isn't clear to me where any of them are going to go. It strikes me that you should put up in your facility in many places and have it available to hand out to your employees and your customers a set of the most important recommendations that are coming out at this meeting. Not so many that no one's going to read it, but not so few that it will be ineffective. And some of them are pretty obvious to me based on what we're hearing today in terms of parking, consideration for neighbors, not unnecessarily revving motorcycles, keeping in mind that this is a residential area other than on Mass Ave itself. And it seems to me that if you could put on one page, 8 and a half by 11, not in six point type, but in very visible type, perhaps with colors, perhaps with bold face type, do it once, print out 100 copies, post them all over your facility, give them to your customers, give them to your employees. Maybe that would be some way to homogenize an approach that would help as opposed to people just sitting here, including myself, and complaining about what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. And can I ask one thing in terms of the, the trucks and the trailers, the way you park them, they're parked on Mass Ave. Um, when you come down Robbins Road and you hit Mass Ave, if you want to take a right onto Mass Ave, you, that, those trucks get parked right where the mailbox is mm -hmm. and go down. You can't see around that. You actually have to pull almost halfway out into Mass Ave that's to be able to point. see yeah, if any sure. cars are coming down. Robbins, you're talking about. Robbins. Right, right, coming right. from Robbins onto Mass Ave. Yeah. They're parking too close to the corner. Right, and you can't see well, around. Well, it's actually illegal. Down there. It, right. is, it is illegal. Yeah. 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 Happens all over town, but yeah. it is Understood. completely yeah. illegal. What's the process to go get signs that say no parking on the corner? It just, like you said, it happens everywhere. but. Is there a process to do that? Yeah, select. Yeah, select. I'd love to get one for yeah, Higgins and, and Quincy. It's like, it just because when I went to driving school, I told you, it's illegal to park on the corner. But every, like you said, everybody does it, yeah. and it's dangerous. This but evening when we came down, there was, a, there was a car parked on the corner, blocking the handicap ramp on from the sidewalk oh, in, the front the in front of the fire hydrant. Okay. And on a really busy day, they're all around there. So. Yeah, I'm not saying who it was, but, but that whole, the, the businesses that are there are very busy and they have very limited parking and we take the brunt of it in that whole circle. Okay, anybody else here that wants to give a comment? Okay. Uh, I'm not in response, you don't need to. Not at this time, I, just, I would say. I just was going to thank them. It's good to hear it. I made notes of every single thing, and uh, it's, uh, it's enlightening. Um, no defense whatsoever, uh, except to say one thing. Uh, uh, I'd like all the comments. Uh, and uh, our uh, employees are uh, revving in the driveways. So and uh, the up and down the streets, if uh, a lot of it could be my clients. But I made notes of 80% of this I can address, if not 100. And uh, it was enlightening and it was good to hear. So that's what I'd like to say. Okay, let me first ask, does the board have any additional questions? Before we I have a question. No. No. So I'm hearing a lot of concerns about parking. 
uh, that maybe even the 13 spaces. Uh, I, I think I'd like to get some clarification from Michael Byrne on exactly how he figured out the parking spaces and uh, why 13 is sufficient and um, why it could be reduced to 10 even. Because I don't, in hearing what I've heard tonight from both the butters and from the board, I don't believe that 10 spaces is an option at this point. I'm sorry, I do have one question. I'm sorry, but sure. the, the two trucks, where where do they park? At the end of the night, after they're done picking up and dropping off, they're parked right in the our center driveway, right in, in, in the, the center. The center. In the center. The motorcycles all move and the trucks come and in. The trucks come, trucks come in, putting it all down, and that's almost like. And a, during the day, they're just they're elsewhere. out and about. They're loading and okay. going and delivering. Thank you. I'm sorry. I just. Right. And sometimes what, they do stay parked, it sounds like. It does sound that way. More than... It's supposed to be under two hours, and it generally is under two, although they've abused it. It sounds like a, I mean, a, a obviously, uh, hearing from our neighbors. Right. And what I'd like to propose is that um, we don't make a decision tonight, but we get a another application from you that addresses some of these concerns in a little bit more concrete way. Mm -hmm. um, the outdoor structure, I think, needs to be addressed. The parking still needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. If you're ready to put in a gate, we can start to address that. I think we've talked about some ideas mm -hmm. that might work for motorcycle parking. We've talked about designating public parking. I don't know where the closest public parking is to this mm -hmm. location. It's yeah, a little bit easier school. in the center of town where there is parking that can be purchased for employees middle use. School. Middle school? During the day, during the day, it would work. Yeah. Yes, I don't know if that's actually an option. And also signage. Yeah, yeah. I touched on signage. But, um, and I would just echo what the chair has said. I, I think um, my recommendation is to, below is to come back with. I, I would recommend more of a to scale type drawing. I know it says at the bottom scale one inch equals 20 feet, but I, I think this is a schematic. It's not really planned. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important because you need to see the size of the parking spaces to see if, they're, uh, if they meet the bylaw requirements. Um, I would give some thought as to whether your loading vehicles, trucks, could come back through the back this way instead of being on a mass out. Mm -hmm. So you can load motorcycles onto the truck and if you have room for it to get back out Quincy Street, uh, you have to deal with turning radius there. I don't can know they come off of Robbins? Or they can't? No, I don't I can't tell if this goes all so. the way through to Robbins. But but that's a no. That's a problem to so be solved, and I'm not saying I have the solution, but, you know, that's, that's... I think once I acquire to uh, to address a lot of this, once we do take over the island tire spot, it'll address mm -hmm. almost all of it. My, 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 my vehicles can load and unload right from my parking lot. Um, we won't have a lot of the uh, the noise. By the way, we can address our, our working on the bike noise uh, effective immediately regardless of what the board and the neighbors are saying, oh, because of the neighbors. Well, I, I think that would be a great we can, step. We can work on everything inside. It's just so convenient to go right outside. I'm sure. sure. They shouldn't be. We but have you do have parts, portions have, of the building that are indicated for service. We, areas, and right? they're fully serviceable. It's just yeah. the convenience of the weather and the this and the that. It's not yeah. appropriate. So we can, we can start addressing a lot of this mm -hmm. immediately. But I think if you do come back with a concrete proposal, for us, the, as the chair is requesting, the proposal can't really talk about what might happen on no, the site in six months because we don't really know if Arlington Tire might choose to extend its lease or exercise its option or whatever the arrangement is. And even if is. they do stay, I can give you a I can come okay. back and really address this. Okay to the level that would be satisfactory to everybody. I, I think at this point that's what we're looking for, a rather quick turnaround for you to come back and address the current violations that yes. have been ongoing for, as you know, mm -hmm. a long time. The yep. parking has been an issue for a long time, and we've heard it again from the residents. 
the loading and the parking of vehicles on the street has been an issue for a long time. Uh, the noise we're hearing, I think, kind of for the first time tonight. Uh, the motorcycles, actually, we didn't realize what an issue that that was. So some of these immediate things we that you can address right now, we'd like you to address. Yep. But if you come back, at, you know, at the next available meeting time uh, with a plan of what you can do right now with Arlington Tire Company still there in the building. That's what I'll do if it's something we're going to meet soon with, yeah. Right. Unless something happens between now and the next meeting. Right, and we do need a two-scale plan mm -hmm. yeah, so that we can see that. what your setbacks are that you're yep. proposing for different things. Yep. We have that, by the way. We took the board, I mean, this, uh, we have so many to scale plans. We do have it. Uh, this was just because we've been here for so long and you've seen us for so long, um, hopefully not <coughs> all in a bad way, but all these issues, I understand that we did this just to give you a, a snapshot, but we'll bring you to scale and have it be the code, and, and which is what we did right. when we had the original 21 parking. It was done. Right. Then we can see the size of the parking spaces, yep. the size of the aisles, whether they we meet might have to use a, the requirement for backup for and all of that kind yep. of thing, too. Right. But we have those, and we can provide that. I made notes on every single point, actually, so I have a very good taste and flavor of what I need to do to connect for the next uh, hearing. Now, so we're not going to take any action tonight, I think. Request to request a continuation. So um, we'll, we'll need the applicant to request a continuation of the I'm hearing. going to request a continuance. And we have to make it to a date certain? With one uh, small caveat, and it is addressed. I don't know if I addressed it in my letter. Uh, felt, and I'm going to say this with gentleness and respect, obviously. I didn't actually bring it up here, but I did in one of my letters where the our tenant that wants to put a antenna on the roof, which is a small one and very efficient and neat, it's everything that's happening here is irrelevant to that block on the antenna. Kind of hindering, uh, are they in the roof, by the way? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's a, it's a, an antenna. It's not, it's a separate, it's not a tenant or anything else, it's just an antenna. They've gone through a, a long, long, long waiting process. Is, is, is that relevant to bring up here and now? Sure. Because it seems like they're being penalized because of this parking center situation and they just want to put an antenna on the roofs for communication purposes. It's like a separate thing. I know it's being tied into this, but it suggesting it's separate if there was some, something could be done since we're heading in a good positive direction I didn't know if the board would see uh, their way to say you know okay you know let them do their thing on their antenna while we do our thing on the ground uh, I don't know if anybody wants to I'm, I'm happy to sure uh, do you want to go no you don't um, well I guess, and this isn't the hearing for that, so I guess I'll be interested to hear how that hearing goes. Um, but, you know, and don't take this cynically, but the fact that that has gone on for so long, um, I think it's great you're here mm -hmm. and that you're listening to the concerns, but you can't help but wonder whether the hold up on that particular tenant is the reason that you are here. And that if that tenant is no longer held up, because the issues that we have with oh. that new tenant is yeah. they need to, you know, bring in trucks, which you don't have enough parking, you know, so in the circulation yeah. problems. So, frankly, if if that all of a sudden, you know, goes away, is it going to be another 10 years before you come before the board again? Because nothing says that you have to come back for that continued, uh, continued hearing or anything else. I, I hate to be cynical. I hate to be uh, pessimistic. But... From my perspective, and once again, I look forward to the next hearing and not making any uh, presumptions. Uh, however, the problem has always been with that other one is the circulation that would be required for the um, for putting those antenna in mm -hmm. for the maintenance. The an those antenna, there's no room for those trucks because you don't have enough parking right now. So, uh, among other things, so um, so from that perspective, my view is is I think that you know, uh, and I okay, we have to solve this first. 
That's why we've continued it as many times as we had, because we were waiting for you <laughs> to come to the board and to address the long-time issues that, that needed to be addressed. Gotcha. So okay. we're very happy that you're here tonight. We're pleased to, to, to meet here. you, to <laughs> see you, to hear some of the ideas you have for improvements. We're hoping that you will be back here as uh, rapidly can as you I can come be. Uh, which, can I, next Monday, okay? <laughs> we can get this so, done quickly. Again, if we're going to continue this, do we need to continue it to a date? Yes, it takes certain time, certain. Yes. Usually right on a Monday. Uh, yeah, so the next meeting date is September 22nd. There, um, there are a couple items, but there's probably um, there is time on that with that agenda. Okay. Well, if that gives you enough time to yeah. address some of these things. Yeah, we'll address that two weeks. Weeks. That's two weeks from today. So the applicant has, has already requested a continuance, and we don't need to make a motion to continue. Uh, we do. Oh. Uh, so I'll okay. move that we uh, continue the hearing at the applicant's request to September 20, is it, I'm sorry, 22nd, 22nd. 22nd 2014 at, what, I'm sorry, what time? 7, at 7 p.m. Okay. At 7 p.m. Uh, second. second? A second. Seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Uh, are we invited to that as well? Certainly. Okay. Okay. You're invited to every one of them. Okay. <laughs> Have you got one more? You oh, but you're invited. <laughs> you're always invited. <laughs> We'd love to see you. <laughs> okay, now I noticed that our second applicant. I think he's just. You know what? We need some. Yeah, I, I'm getting ready. Um, a butters? 730? Um, 730? I just want to change the motion. Oh, sorry. Change the time. I'll move to amend the motion to say 730 on the 22nd. All right. So, I second that. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 I think the neighbors can, well, thank you. if you can no, inform your thank neighbors, you very much for 730. We appreciate it. We look thank forward to finding a solution. Get it tightened up. Is there a restaurant? The one in Town Hall is much nicer, like down. Oh, you know what? You can in go front through of the entrance. and over. Can I cut over? Yeah. 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 across the top of the Or you can just use dark in there. It's very Yeah, it's awful in there. there's a light on the inside. Yeah. I get that. Fear of heights in there. Should we try to get the two watching guys to come? I won't wait till Bruce is back. Where did he go? Yeah, my thing? Okay. It'll only be a minute. <laughs> sure, sure, okay. Yeah, they're not good. So we're going to move uh, Laura up on the agenda. And this is for the um, discussion of the escrow closeout for 3050 Mill Street. That's right. Um, so you probably remember that um, there were a series of transportation-oriented improvements yeah. that were mandated by um, the special permit for Brigham's, uh, Brigham Square. Um, and those have all been completed now, and we want to release the $15,000 escrow account to the Department of Public Works, which has fronted the money for um, the traffic improvements, which were pretty much exclusively in the area of um, where the bike path crosses Mill Street. Uh, they spent about $9,730 for those improvements, and so we want to release of the $15,000, that amount, for traffic improvements. Another thing came up more recently that doesn't directly involve the Redevelopment Board, but um, the Department of Public Works had an agreement with um, the developer, Wood Partners, to replace a water valve that they have not yet replaced. Um, although the, the, the mitigation escrow agreement does not cover that type of thing, we do have a written statement from the, develop, the developer, Wood Partners, that they would like to release the rest of the money to Public Works to partially offset the cost of the water valve replacement, and then they will give them another check for the rest. So. Um, with the vote that I've given you, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, we'll release the entire escrow account to the Department of Public Works. Does anybody have any 
questions? I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, is Mr. Chenard um, confident that the $9,731 covers all the traffic mitigation? I think the mitigation is finished. Okay. Great. Carol, what was the, the rest of it, the, the balance to be used for? A water valve replacement. Not a traffic issue? No. But can it be used for that if it was put aside for traffic issues? By agreement. But, right, we have a written, a written email from Addy Brady yes. saying that they would like to release that money in partial to partially cover that cost to the Department of Public Works. And why not they cover the whole thing? They will write, adi write an additional check. It's, it's not it's enough. enough. The it's balance enough is 15000 right. So that's only another 5309 that would go towards the water meter valve and the water main. That's right. But it's going to cost more than that. But why isn't the developer then? They, they are in essence because we're not releasing the escrow back to them. They're asking us to just release it back to uh, Wayne. To the DPW. DPW. Oh. Right. So it's going to the town to replace the It's property. going to the town yeah. to right. partially offset. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if we didn't give it to the DPW, we would have to return 5309 so to the partners. We've done all the traffic and we're taking $5,000 other than using it for another purpose, right. but it's town purpose. Right, and with, with partners um, consent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my only question, uh, it's a minor one, is the solar panel working? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's what I was wondering, because we had so much discussion about yeah. what was wrong with it and how they were going to fix it. I think they replaced the, ba they've got a bigger battery with okay. the um, solution. Okay, great. Okay, there's no other it, questions? And this it? includes all of the traffic mitigations that, oh, yes, the that TAC, were in the special permit. The TAC brought up to us mm -hmm. for yes. the bikeway crossing. Cross bars, the stop bars, the stop ahead, straight arrows, the All eight foot stuff. bicycle crossing. Gotcha. Markings, so, that, so that coordinates signs. with Yes, with this okay. what's in the special okay. permit. Okay. Good. Okay. So I can entertain a motion. Do you have a I have one written out actually. <laughs> yeah, it's Do you want to read it? Yeah. Do you, where the, I, there were six copies of the vote. The, oh, there there was, that's right. The proposed, <laughs> oh, there is a vote. Yes, oh, there are. Proposed vote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wrote right one here. thinking it was uh, an easy one. <laughs> nice, nice job. Yeah. Really easy. <laughs> yeah. You are on top like of things, Christine. You are on top of two of these. I'd like to see yours. Yeah, exactly. Let me read yours first and I'll see whether we read mine. I'm just going to pick a bunch of those. Oh, it's fifteen thousand forty, not fifteen thousand. And that's just interest. interest. Wow, somebody paid interest. Oh. M M D T. Okay, the, the only thing I would add and is and to close the escrow account with okay. the other item, right? So yes, if somebody wants to read that motion. Uh, I move that in keeping with the mitigation escrow agreement dated March 18, thousand thirteen, the Arlington Redevelopment Board hereby approve disbursement of the full amount in the mitigation escrow account, namely $15,040 as of this date, September 8, 2014, to the Arlington Department of Public Works for the following purposes. $9,731 for Mill Street bike path improvements and $5,309 to partially offset costs of a water valve replacement. I would add, as agreed by the developer. As agreed by the developer. And, then Christine, yeah. you want to say, yeah, and that this would now close the escrow account. And to, yeah, and to close the escrow account, exactly. And to close the escrow account. I, I second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, yeah. Right. Did you get all that, Carol? As agreed to yes. by the developer and to close the escrow. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. So now I'd like to move to the next agenda item and open the. Uh, well, we're reopening the hearing, um, continuing the hearing for the environmental design review special permit, um, also at 1098 Mass Ave, um, for Verizon Wireless to mount. 12 antennas with remote radio heads 
and rooftop mounted equipment shed um, to the top of the Boston Motor Vehicle Building. Hello. Good Hello. Evening. If you could introduce yourself again to yeah, the audience at home. Yes, Daniel Klasnick. I'm the attorney for Verizon Wireless. As, uh, as the board knows, we've, we've been before you since the beginning of June, uh, pursuing the installation of the wireless telecommunications facility at the Boston uh, Motorsports uh, rooftop. Um, I think we've already discussed that there are two existing wireless service providers, T-Mobile and Sprint, operating facilities there now. And I think, substantively, the input that I believe I've received from the board is that there isn't any particular concerns with the Verizon Wireless install, and it seems that the neighbors don't have any particular concerns because they all left as soon as that gentleman that had the property left. Um, so, substantively, I think what Verizon Wireless is attempting to do is put forward a responsible proposal to address what we've substantiated to be a need for wireless service improvement in this area of the town of Arlington. We've done it in a manner I think that's responsible and that we've tried to screen the antennas and screen the rooftop and equipment shelter in a substantially similar manner to the one that was uh, currently installed by Sprint. So I, well, what I guess we would ask the board to do and what we've talked about previously is Verizon Wireless this is one of their top sites for this year and because of these delays I think it's probably not going to be possible to put it on air this week. I think we talked last time about the, the build time and what's necessary to accomplish that. Um, you know, with the appeal periods and just filing for the and everything. So I know I've, I've heard the discourse that happened this evening. I think it was positive. Hopefully the board thinks it was positive. Um, the property owner did appear. He seems to be making good faith efforts to try and address the concerns. And I think there's some inherent, uh, you know, difficulties, I guess, with when you put residential right next to commercial, that there's nothing that this board or anyone else can do. It seems clear that the town has substantial ability to actually enforce what are already existing violations if they chose to do so. Um, from what I heard this evening, the you know the riding the motorcycles, if they're breaking the law, they just put a police car there and they catch them going up and down the street and then they ticket them. So I, it seems to me that the town has other options or other avenues in which to ensure that this building not only gets into compliance, but remains in compliance through its enforcement mechanisms that are already in place, and that allowing Verizon Wireless to move forward to me seems to me that that would reflect you know, our efforts to work in good faith with this board to design a facility and, and behave in a responsible manner in the community, and to continue to penalize and hold up my client, although I certainly appreciate you know, the advantages and the value uh, to the board, um, seems to me to be contrary to, to the land use function that this board is supposed to serve, which is to evaluate each application based upon the merits of that particular application. Verizon Wireless does not require any parking for its use. Um, it's an unmanned wireless facility. I didn't hear any other comments about the other wireless service providers. Verizon Wireless would at most have a technician come once a month after the facility is constructed to service it perhaps not even that frequently. Um, as I understand it, on-street parking is allowed, so if necessary, they would park on the street, it wouldn't be for an extended period of time, so they wouldn't be leaving cars overnight. It would simply be a cell tech, and either an SUV, a car, or a pickup, stopping, getting out, checking to make sure all the equipment's operating properly. So it's a very low impact for use, and one that's consistent with this zone, and is allowed by the, by the bylaw. How long typically does the vehicle stay? I'm just curious. As far as the service visit, yeah. Chuck, Chuck Weberly, he's a he's a site acquisition consultant who's taken over for Kerry Deaver. Was that he's testified an hour, approximately an hour. I mean, it, it could vary slightly. Obviously, it depends on what they need to do. Mm -hmm. But it's usually they just go in there and they just uh, connect some testing equipment to make sure that everything's operating properly. It's, Correct. That's, yeah. that's primarily what their function is. It's typically, the technician with a backpack and a laptop. No actual real work takes place inside. It just plugs in his laptop, does some diagnostics. Um, it's typically in like a small SUV. Actually some of them in the more urban locations are driving smaller cars, Priuses now. Um, but it's not, I mean it has commercial plates, but it's not a, a box truck, if you will. Mm -hmm. I think I want to hear from the board first on how we feel after the last hearing as, you know, as you stated, we've heard your application before. We've told you it's been a very complete, thorough application, and 
um, we appreciate your efforts so far, and it's unfortunate that this site has a lot of pre-existing issues um, that were violations, that are still violations, and still congestion and circulation issues. And the board's original statements to you, I think, were in the effect of, we don't want to add more congestion, we don't want to um, increase violations to safety that are already existing there. So. I think that, um, first, I would just like I, to thank you for your efforts, Dan, in regard to whatever work you're doing behind the scenes to bring the property owner back in front of us. Uh, because that is the way that those underlying site violations are going to get addressed. There are some enforcement mechanisms that are available to us as, uh, at, from the town's point of view, but uh, to date they have not really been effective. Um, I think it's an interesting legal question as to whether we can grant a special permit for use at a site when the sort of underlying special permit is been in vi that, that, that it's been in violation almost since the day it was, was issued. Um, and I don't profess to know the answer to that, but I think you know my, my gut is that your special permit builds and rests on the underlying special permit, and if that's invalid and could possibly be capable of being revoked, um, I don't see how we're in a position to grant a special permit um, to Verizon. Now, that being said, I think the earlier special permit hearing was constructive. And my hope is that the property owner is going to come back with a plan that will address the board's concerns and the, the public's concerns. Um, and we may only be two weeks away from a solution. Um, so. My own feeling is it's still premature for a vote on the Verizon special permit, although, as the chair said, it's, it's a strong application. And I think that, you know, my, my sense is that I would be prepared to vote in favor of it if the underlying special permit violation is more pure. Um, um, in a similar way, I, I would also like to think that two weeks from now we'll have a plan in hand that we can be much more comfortable with and can um, uh, hopefully um, rely on and, and have some other questions maybe answered with respect to enforcement um, and what can be done and, and, and fines and that, that type of thing um, to be able to feel good enough that, I mean, from my perspective since day one, you know, I've talked about circulation and everything else. I know it's just one car. I know it's only for a couple hours, but you're hearing the what what we're dealing with. So I still think it's relevant. The underlying issues are still relevant to your application, unfortunately. Um, and uh, from that perspective, I hope that two weeks from now that we'll be in a much better uh, place with respect to it. I tend to agree with both my colleagues. I am not allowed to rule on this one at this point. Oh, that's right. Oh, you're not. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, I thought you were going to review the question. I was not able to do that for the time frame. I wasn't sure if this was going to be the day for that. It's possible the next <laughs> hearing. Or but a, vote of, a vote of four would. A vote of four would do it also. Yeah. And, and I agree with my colleagues that I would be in favor of it. Um, but these underlying issues, it's taken us, you know, your first application came in in May. It's taken us from May until now to see the owner here in front of the board with any type of application, um, which is an extremely positive step. And we're very happy that he came in tonight. I'm, I'm afraid that if we take the pressure off of him, that we won't see him again. And sure, we have enforcement mechanisms, um, but they haven't been effective for whatever reasons they haven't been. 
Um, so if, if two weeks, you know, we've already got them on the agenda now for the continuance of the hearing in two weeks. If you'd be so inclined to also request the continuance to the same evening, I think we can put both on again. We're very close, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it feels that way. Um, I'm hoping the applicant will come in and, and work with Carol to really get a plan that's going to be in shape in two weeks. There's no guarantee of that either, but... At that point, maybe our comfort level at least will be high enough that even if we're not fully satisfied, we know that we're really have some momentum working in the right direction. I don't feel that we have that momentum yet. I have to agree. You're, you're looking at me, so I'm going to take the opportunity yes, to please <laughs> disagree. I um, I spend a lot of time meeting with Mr. Sarandolo, and you can tell that. Um, he also spent time with the Director of Inspectional Services. Uh, I was a little disappointed with the, what, what came back um, because it, I knew it didn't address everything. Uh, but I do feel like progress is, has been made tonight, and I think progress. I think he, he gets the message loud and clear that these long-standing violations have to end. And I also want to just conclude by saying that if this were a swap out of equipment from an existing carrier who was just updating equipment, that might even be different. But this is adding a third carrier and adding two structures on the roof. It, it is more intensity of use on the property, in, in my view. So I, I appreciate the patience you've um, brought to this. And I, I agree, I do appreciate if you've done anything to help Mr. Sarandolo get, get in here, because it's helping you. It's helping your client. So the 20 seconds is going to be a busy meeting, but worthwhile. Well, as I said, the you know, Verizon Wireless wants to be trying to work with the board and the community and try and bring this forward, so I don't see two weeks. Although, just so the board understands, I'm under a lot of pressure to get this done. I'm going to keep yelling at me. Um, <laughs> Tell me no one could be doing a better job than you've been doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's on film. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Thank you. I appreciate that. So yes, yeah, certainly. Very true. I, I, I think it's in my client's best interest to request a continuance to the twenty second. Okay. I'll move that we continue the hearing to September twenty second, two thousand fourteen, eight thirty. Does that yeah. sound right? That's right? probably okay, okay because we have a couple of things we're going to need to hear. Yeah. Um, before Mr. Serendolo, and then probably right after Mr. Serendolo, and. So maybe it needs to be even longer. Nine. Nine. Mr. Sarandolo took an hour today mm -hmm. for, for all of us to hear Nine what he probably had. Nine is safer. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking an hour. Okay. In worst can, case, we can put other things in between. Right? Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At nine o'clock. Like you, you can move it. Right. You can move it back. Yeah. We just yeah. can't so you can start earlier. Okay. We could say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's be helpful. That. Rather than locking ourselves in. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Sarandolo. Second. Okay. Mr. Sarandolo. Mr. Sarandolo. Mr. Sarandolo. Mr. Um, and that this is a, a letter that Attorney Classic will provide that states that we're continuing the hearing and we'll get your signature and uh, for his client. Okay. So that you're going to be in Sure. Sorry, Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. We love Thanks. seeing you here. Yeah. <laughs> Can I bring up a related question, just to have some more? Do you want the no, 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 no. no, no. Okay. Um, um, this is just for us. Sure. Um, Carol, can you, can you request what kinds of signs might be applicable for the things that we've noticed today? Um, we we right? have a letter that states that uh, what the fines are, how much. Oh, and they can go up to three hundred dollars a day. The for first offense, second oh, offense, third for that, offense. For if the tent is not permitted, if there's, you know, obviously it's not oh, for those. parking spaces. No, I'm talking about, you know, 
<clears throat> I think the point that Attorney Klasnick made was that there are enforcement um, avenues available to the uh, uh, to the town, and I guess I, I have to scratch my head a little bit because I don't know, frankly, what those are. So um, we did get uh, a letter on June twenty seventh from what was addressed to Paragina from Michael Byrne. Um, if the notice of warning is not complied with according to the time specified in said warning, the inspector of buildings for saying to uh, each day in violation um, in which a violation exists shall be deemed a separate offense. The penalty for violation of any provision of this bylaw shall be 25 for the first, 50 for the second, 100 for the third, and 200 for the fourth and each subsequent <coughs> okay. offense. And this could have gone into effect I mean, this was June 27th, right. and we heard this, so I don't know at what meeting well, that was. Well, maybe maybe the question's a little different. Um, thank you, that's really helpful, actually, is when you're asking the, ins uh, the enforcement officer uh, about the, uh, how he came up with the parking spaces, I think, we're mm -hmm. asking about the calculation. Um, the, I guess I'd be curious as to whether there's a plan for enforcement of a few of these things that we've noticed. I may be misremembering the uh, bylaws, <laughs> but um, I think that the building inspector does have to go before the Board of Selectment oh. before the fine can be issued. Is that, Is that right? Because the, the zoning enforcement officer can seek both a civil as well as a criminal remedy. Okay. Right. Um, that, that is stated in here that and at least the criminal remedy, he has to go before the police. Yeah, okay, which would make some sense. Um, yeah. Not sure about the civil. Civil, yeah. That might just be helpful because... And then he goes on to say the inspector of buildings may also, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, institute appropriate criminal action. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, it's only the criminal one. Anyway, I'd be curious to know more yeah. about the details of, yeah. of how he would proceed with enforcement. Yeah. What steps he needs to take. Yeah, if we, if we, frankly, if Verizon was off the table, one way or the other, right. what, I mean, they've only got a certain amount of time before maybe we're ending up with an up or down. And if we went down, we'd have the exact same issue, which is what would the enforcement be to keep Mr. Uh, um, Sardola um, interested in uh, meeting the needs of the neighbors? The we town. have the right as a board to revoke any or all of the special permits previously. Yes, and that, given, not, but that was, was that, um, that was on the table a few years ago. Yeah. Um, okay. What and would maybe that that's, accomplish maybe that's, though? Like the tent isn't even permitted. You're not revoking anything. You're revoking the special permit. Right to use. The right to use this property. The right to use the property. For motor vehicle right. sales, because that's a special permit That's use. a special permit use. Hmm. And that was proceeding several years ago. And one of the special permits in front of you, I believe, is a result of that. Actually, the most, the current parking arrangement was a product of that hearing to revoke the special permit. Okay. The current existing today on the ground parking arrangement yes. or on plan? The, 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 on the plan. plan. The plan. The plan. On Which plan. reflected the, the several tenants, several additional uh, tenants on the property. That was the there. 21 space plan. Yes. That's right. Which has never really been implemented. Apparently not. Appear. Okay, thank you. That's actually really helpful to me in kind of thinking about it. Okay, anything else before we move on? All right, so we just have a few items left uh, on the agenda. Central school update. Okay. Carol's going to um, give us a little bit. The Council on Aging has experienced increased demand for services and needs additional space. And town staff and the town manager and Two members of this board met with uh, the president and vice president of the Seniors Association, the nonprofit Arlington Seniors Association, which, as the board knows, has been an occupant in the building for many years. 
to let them know that some of the space that they've been using will be repurposed. And this is going to be on for Council on Aging Services. This will be on your agenda, I hope, on the 22nd for uh, further consideration and action. This is all related to the board has been working, you've had on your work plan for some time, and asked me to try to work on re-tenanting um, some of the leased spaces in the central school buildings, which that account includes the central school, the Jefferson Cutter House, and 23 Maple Street. We have three spaces that are supposed to be leased with occupants who, two of whom have never had a lease, and one whose lease expired and has been a tenant at will. So this will also be part of an effort to put out a request for proposals for those spaces and get those tenanted. Um, so in addition, we have uh, been discussing a pavement scheme to make some improvements on the site. We know that um, so a lot of the pavement is in disrepair, and um, Christine Sikinski has very kindly prepared concepts you've reviewed. We're moving further on getting those refined, getting um, actual specifications prepared to go to bid. Um, with regard to 23 Maple Street, we are putting together the um, RFP to get that building under procurement law, get it a, a lease negotiated and executed. Uh, likewise, um, there's a space under the eaves in the Central School that for many, many years has been um, occupied by Mr. River Watershed Association, so I've contacted them to let them know that we would be putting out an RFP. It would be nice if they were successful, which doesn't mean that um, this would, all of these leases would be open to anyone to bid their that would go through procurement. So this is probably going to mean some growing pains. So it, I wanted the board to be aware. You, you may begin to hear from some of the occupants. Um, if you have any questions or concerns in the interim, let me know. Uh, but we will have, a, I'm hopeful we'll have it on the agenda on the 22nd. And part of these growing pains are that the Council of Aging is growing and needs more space. Uh, and they will, they do expect to um, to provide some additional services and programs and really need the space to do that. So it's, it's, I think it's a positive thing. I think the intention is to have all of the programming that's continued, that, that is currently offered, continue to be offered. With quite a bit of additional complementary programs. From the council. From the council on aging. Will the R will the RFPs um, for the three buildings be separate RFPs? Yes, they will. Yes, they okay. Will. Can you us talk a little history there? Next door. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, just, just to give some context, yeah, some set. of some members may not realize that in um, the early 1980s, when the Central School was transferred by town meeting, it was um, surplus at the school building, it was transferred to the custody of the redevelopment board for redevelopment. An urban renewal project was undertaken and um, approved by town meeting to renovate the building to create a, a building for seniors, a senior center, and for the public. And the some of the space in the upper stories was going to be rented so that that could subsidize the senior use. Included in that plan was uh, an intention that the Arlington, Se Arlington Seniors Association, which is a nonprofit organization, would be a tenant. Uh, once the building got, com um, once it was ready to be occupied. Shortly after they took occupancy, they were supposed to negotiate a lease. The record shows that that was, um, that did not happen. The Arlington Seniors Association at the time um, made the argument that they should not pay rent 
um, compressing a lot of history into a very short period of time. They made the argument that they should not pay rent, um, and they haven't paid rent. Um, that's a lot of space that has... Nor had a lease. For they've a never had a lease. Um, so there's no protection against liability claims because there is no agreement, there's no lease, and um, so that's one concern. There is also a concern about fair and equal access to programming, and there's also a little concern about meeting the um, procurement law, which you, you can't convey a public good or services or service to, you, you can't just give it away as a municipal government or as a government body that has to go through, that has to be made available on an equal footing basis. Every, everyone has to, is supposed to have an opportunity to compete for that public good. And that wasn't done with this space. So it's time to do that. And um, that's a secondary but important aspect of this. I think the real positive thing is that I think we're now at a point where we, we're seeing this um, blossoming of programming to meet this blossoming of interest as the aging population increases. And this, we need the space to do it. And to their credit, I think the Council on Aging um, and, and others have worked, and I hope will continue to work, to try to not just maintain, I know the Council on Aging is going to increase programming. I believe that and hope that the ASA will continue its programming as well. They're uh, very welcome to do that. Uh, and they may even be able to do that by leasing some smaller portion of the space in the building. Any questions? Does that make any sense? <laughs> okay. Carol did a very good job of presenting it to the Arlington Senior Association when we met with the president and the vice president in a very positive way because it could be a very positive collaborative effort now to really strengthen programming, fully utilize the space that's there. Right now it's underutilized. It's very much underutilized and we shouldn't have any town buildings that are very much underutilized. Especially ones to be used for seniors. Exactly. Well, there's Especially when there's so many seniors in town that would love to partake in more programming. So we're hoping that making the site more accessible will also help. And we can go into more detail, I'm sure, when this is on the agenda for action. But um, one thing I left out that I think is important: the Council on Aging needs to meet um, HIPAA requirements, the Healthcare right. Information and um, Privacy and Portability Act. I probably butchered that a little bit, but. Um, it, it's taken very seriously, and right now they don't have a place where they can have that type of consultation with um, elderly um, people who come for services. So it's very awkward for them. Um, so this will afford them, we're, we're hoping that even as soon as October we may be able to have some spaces where they can conduct those interviews and meet HIPAA requirements, because that's also a real concern. The town has some liability there as well. So we're hoping we'll come. And accountability. And accountability. HIP Two A's. Good to know. I, I knew that at one point, but forgot it. So HIPAA, not HI. It is not a I female P -A. hippo, correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hip hop. A hip double A. I just thought it was an E, H E P A, but. Well, no. That's the filter <laughs> in your vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> really. So we're hoping at the next meeting we propose for the board to take action, actually. Okay, so next item is also for Carol on the agenda, the sign review. Okay, the board might recall uh, in June, and if you don't, don't worry about it, um, having received in your packets a draft set of procedures for possible administrative review for the board to consider adopting on sign proposals that meet certain very specific conditions. Uh, we get a lot of um, new businesses change, and that means the sign changes in a property that's already gone through EDR. So very often your time is taken, and theirs as well, with the, the weight and the expense and about our notifications for what seems to be a, a re routine review. So I've put forth some criteria for your consideration to see if you think that sign applications that meet these criteria could be handled by staff 
administratively rather than going through the reopening of a special permit process. So those criteria would be, um, they would have to meet all of these. The property, building, or storefront has already received prior sign approval from the ARB through environmental de design review and a sign permit from inspectional services. So right there, if they don't have a sign permit, they don't get administrative review. If they haven't gone through EDR before, they're not eligible for this. They would also have to, um, we would also have to ensure that there are no known zoning or general bylaw violations on the property. They would have to be proposing the same number or fewer signs as what they already have permission for. They'd have to be the same size or smaller. The signs would be proposed for the same locations as the existing signs. The sign illumination is either not proposed or is the same as for the existing signs. Or is external shielded down lighting. And the proposed sign is not internally illuminated. And see, th this is to capture and all of the things that I might think the board would want to have a chance to review. So stop me at any point. The building is not in or is... Well, actually, can I back up to the one before? Proposed sign is not internally illuminated. If, if it were <coughs> internally illuminated before, you're saying that it still wouldn't... I guess I, I'm actually thinking that, that so long as it was internally illuminated before, and it's no more lumens or anything else, why wouldn't that also be subject to administrative review? That makes sense. I think that if, if that's possible. I, I think mean, because technology changes, it might be, if you had a different type of internal illumination or if there was and I think that's fine. I think that, I, but I'm actually looking for you to, you know, take on even a little bit more, which is uh, that I think, I think if it's different, if it's the same internal illumination, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure why we would not why have you, you need administrative to okay. look at it. Myself, that's that's my own view. I agree. Okay. Well, I'll keep going. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. That's okay. The building is not in, or is I think there's a typo here. The building is not in, nor is it adjacent to the historic no. district. Nor is the building listed on the Arlington Inventory of Historically Significant Properties or the State Register of Historic Properties. And no changes proposed in the number of logos, logo for brand name. The new proposed sign meets zoning requirements or parameters set in the EDR special permit. The sign does not have a white background and sign is legible from the public way in the opinion of the director. No window signs are proposed, and this is optional. One of the allowed signs proposed may be a bracket sign that meets the zoning requirements for bracket signs. Now that, is, I'm saying that's optional because the board hasn't had many. It, they're supposed to be allowed by right, but let's, if you're, if it's gone through EDR for a wall sign, and someone wants to come in and, and have a, a bracket sign, and it's subject to EDR, you might want to look at the bracket sign. I don't know. We do have very specific dimensional requirements in the bylaw. We've also prepared a diagram that you might recall from the zoning bylaw amendment at town meeting that clearly shows what you're allowed to, to do in terms of size, distance from the building and all. But uh, it's really a, I have no, there's no wrong answer. It's, if the board would like to see that. Can I jump in for one second, Carol? Sure. Is this, this is great. But can, is there a sentence in here that just simply allows you at any time to decide that this requires uh, the uh, application to the board? So something like DPC, DPC is not required to provide administrative approval and may at any time remand the application to the board. You know, you may see something. And My intention was to include that, but I don't see it. Oh, yeah, because you, did, you always want to be able to say that if there's any mm -hmm. hesitancy, like you if there's brought any up this, question. This thing that Mike brought up, I completely agree with it. If this is a lighted sign and it's substantially yeah. the same, but it's suddenly it's a whole new lighting thing, and whoa, wait a minute, the board needs to understand that we're going to be looking at LED lighting in a whole different category. 
Hold the we phone. We definitely need that sentence. Hold the phone. You got to go back and, and but you don't want it. That's to the say, escape valve. You yeah, and I always think, want. And I think if you have that escape valve, then you don't even need the word optional there. That's because, what I'm, That's my because you always yeah. have the escape valve. Right. Yeah. So you may say, "Hey, this is this is really within the bylaw," or you may say, "Wait, this is." Yeah, we could for probably it. add add it either in the top paragraph or at um, right. Signed proposals that do not meet the above criteria are required to proceed by a formal public hearing to reopen special permit. But I want to add to that that it's not only that they're not because then they'll say, well, I met all these criteria. You can't. You've got to give it to me. I need this. Well, you, that's you, why I think we have to add it either up in the top paragraph right. or as a second yeah. paragraph. So the Department that. of Public. I think Bruce has something Bruce to add also. Oh, well, it's on a, a slightly different point, so why don't you okay. go ahead and okay. finish it. The DP, whatever your acronym is, is not required to provide administrative approval and may at any time remand the application to the board. Remand. You like that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just thought of that. Wow. I was going to refer, but then I decided no. to remand. No, you should remand. Yeah, but to demand no, referral. I think you want to refer, though. Oh, oh, okay. so oh, because I really wanted to Remand is going on. to a lower court from a higher court. All right. Um, I like remand. Well, I was with you, Andy. We, uh, it's a great word. I just don't think it's the appropriate word. I really wanted to use that. Um, but <laughs> um, on the bracket sign, is are we talking about a new bracket sign whereas previously there were no bracket signs if so then I think on your third bullet point where you're talking about it has to be in the same location as the existing sign doesn't really really work without having an exception for a, you know a, for, for a possible bracket sign in lieu of a wall sign or something so like it sounds like um I get your point. I think you're right. Otherwise, the logic of this is um, broken. So that may be remedied by adding an exception into that third bullet mm -hmm. for bracket signs. Okay, except that one of the um, allowed signs may be a bracket sign that meets the zoning requirements. Yeah. Okay. I have one other on the uh, no change is proposed in number of logos or brand name or size of logos or brand name displayed. It just it reads as if if I change my if I change my logo I, I guess I guess if someone changes their logo I'm not sure I have a problem with right. you administratively what, looking what, at that. What about changing it to the scope of you know, yes, the scope of size, but we've already almost got that up here, I guess, right? I, like, I'm not sure we even need that one, right. because, and I think, I think you're going because of the, there's a, the, the, I, mean, I forget which sign bylaw it is, that talks about logos, but mm -hmm. I think what we decided on that, that was more like a Coca-Cola sign or something like that, versus the name of the store or what have you, but, but it seems to me, that I'm not sure you need that one because of the third bullet point, which is talking about the same number fewer signs are proposed, the same size or smaller sign or sign areas are proposed. I'm not exactly sure the logos rise to their own category. And I think I would be concerned that um, that it might not pick up something that's a pretty easy change just because a store changed mm -hmm. its name. So. Yeah, and if it's if it's a bigger change once again, you can always bring it back. Prefer. Prefer. Yeah, yeah. Once again, it's required. I had one Walk comment on the third bullet, and then we'll move on to the rest of them. Um, it's, excuse me, though. Do you agree I should strike that then? That, that bullet one, two, three, four? Yeah, logos and logos. I think that's the, fine to strike that. The brand name and logo. Okay. Go ahead. Does everybody agree? Yes. Yes, you agree, Bruce? I guess strike I agree. Strike that. Andrew? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We can strike that one. Right. So continue. You're okay with that also? Because yeah. yeah. she's okay. controlled by the size of the sign and all these other things. Yeah, right. Yeah. So th that's the one that, too, if um, the same number or fewer signs are proposed. Now, we might have the situation where fewer signs is not safe or not appropriate. So I have a little bit of a problem with that. Maybe we the same number or fewer signs are proposed uh, if 
safety is not impaired? Or I'm thinking of certain isn't that instances the safety, isn't where... That a, isn't that one of the safety valve questions? That's a safety valve is what I'm saying. Because they're going to have so many you can different conditions. Refer. There'll be a time when it'll look just right, but the combination of the mm -hmm. way it looks, she's going to say, this needs board, a board referral. Because yeah. I just don't feel comfortable with it. That's sometimes, like is, if you were to reduce the size of, say, yeah, the numbers no, on a gas, the the amount the gas costs yeah. at the gas station. We looked at those numbers and we had one applicant that the numbers were smaller. We didn't actually like that because you couldn't read it easily when you're driving past and it was a safety issue. Do you remember that? I forget which applicant that was. I mean, it's a minor thing, but mm -hmm. sometimes making the signs smaller isn't always better. But it's... but. <laughs> But or even making if you, the sign fewer isn't always better. Usually but Christine, is. even if you had that in there, even if you said, you know, unless for safety reasons, the director is still making that call. So it's no Certainly. different than the safety valve. So in other words, do you, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, mm. because either way, the, the director is going to have to make that call, mm. whether it says safety in there or not. True. Um, I guess that's why I think... I mean, and and my could concern be other is other than safety too. Well, right, exactly. My right. concern is if you put safety in there and the director does something or something else. I guess the norm is complains that, that you know there was a safety is issue. Better. The norm is that fewer is better and smaller is better yeah. when it comes to signs. So it would be abnormal. Yeah, and I think yeah. the point is is that you what wouldn't right fit in better. here is if there were more. Right. Okay. I can go with that. Okay, Carol, you wanna continue? So, just to review the one we added, in sign proposals that do not meet the criteria above are required to proceed by our formal public hearings to reopen the special permit. Department of Planning and Community Development is not required to provide administrative approval and may at any time refer the application to the board. And the procedure would be three weeks prior to applying for a signed permit with inspectional services, they would submit to the Department of Planning and Community Development. And that would be photos of the existing signs, schematic drawings with dimensions, et cetera. All of the things that they typically would have to provide, we'd, need to, we'd request to see those things. And we would then give them written notification of administrative approval and an approved set of their materials so that they can take that with them to apply for their building permit for the sign. The only thing I don't address in here is that um, applications usually for review for special permit usually um, is the $200 Fee. I'm not proposing a fee. I, I, part of that is because there would be a legal notice. There would, this would avoid the, the need for legal ad. It would avoid the need for a butter notification. So the, you know, I haven't done a calculus of this, but you can imagine that that cost is significant for, you know, using that two hundred dollars up. This also has administrative overhead costs, but I haven't priced them out. I don't know how the board feels about charging a fee for this or not. I think time is valuable, I mean, you know, but certainly. This does take. It, I could see where it would be. It does take staff review, sure. and, and it can take several iterations to work with. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Carol? Do you think there should be a, a nominal fee to cover your It cost? definitely takes staff time. Um, what was that $200 fee set? Can we set that fee? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, you can. We can. That's not a town meeting issue. We okay. can do that. I think you can put some time. I mean, it, it's, it's convenient. It's fast. It says the director, so you are doing this. That's what makes me, one of the things I like about it. But that also means that your time. Yes, my time. Was you know what? Time. I, I, oh, sorry. Well, also, I, I think that there's probably the signed proposal that you may be getting is going to be sketchier than what the proponent would be providing if they were going in front of the full board. So you may have to do a little bit more Digging. working with the applicant to say, I really need to get a better idea of what it is that you're going to do here. So. And, you know, it could actually be more time consuming. It could be for because it, there's already a lot of back and forth for review. Yeah. If the proposal is sent up to the board, 
and they're going to have to pay the 200. 200 anyway. anyway. I was thinking the so exact same deck, or I was just asked for the 200. Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, yeah. Exactly, and that's what I was thinking. Yeah, well, it would cost the checks, applicant you know, yeah. Yeah. Rip one up, or it doesn't make any sense. It would cost the applicant a lot more than the 200 to that's appear right, here, to, appear. to have their consultants here, their lawyers, whoever. Yeah. If I, I like Andrew's idea. Andrew's idea that we should just charge the same fee. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think so. The same doesn't cover and, and many hours. <laughs> if they were referred to for EDR, I think the fee would be charged again because if, if they've gone through that process and it after all that work it hasn't yield, yielded an, an administrative review, mm -hmm. the work to do the EDR is going to be the same as what someone else might have required of the board who hasn't gone through EDR, but who has paid the $200 fee for the special permit. Yeah, I guess on that yeah. one, I'm, that one, I, I guess I, I would hope that it would become apparent it needs to go to EDR a little bit quicker than that. So maybe we can hold off on whether we're charging the 200 twice. Yeah. Uh, and get some data in that. On how things are going? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, that that would be my, my view because I'd rather, I'd rather think that Let's let's just do two hundred for putting in the sign, okay. the signs, and then see whether we're too high, too low, uh, you know. One and way consider or the other. all the same process. Essentially. Yes, okay. and yes, because because my my own thought is is that it's I should think it's going to become pretty apparent pretty quickly whether something needs to go to EDR, mm -hmm. um, and then you know you're out there with your ad and and uh, the abutters notice before hopefully oh. you've. Taking too much time. Let me ask you. So when you were saying, Bruce, that you, you might get a less than full proposal. Why should you get a less than full proposal? I mean, uh, understanding it's just for the signage, but you're asking for the same stuff here, aren't you? So I thought that it, it should be prepared as if it was a as if it were an EDR. As if it were an EDR, and but you're not making them go. Through, yeah, accepted. and that's yeah. along with at any time you can say, okay, I'm I'm going to bring this up next Monday. We have a meeting or two weeks from now. Yeah, it's it's advertised and right. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think the two hundred makes sense until you have more data okay. uh, that says one way or the other. That's fine. Okay. I don't think the requirements of the submittal for signage should be any different than the EDR. Should be any less, except that they wouldn't have to go through the twelve standards. Exactly. Yeah. Because right. okay. otherwise, you won't be protected against somebody coming back and saying, "Well, did you really look at it carefully?" And, How did uh, you uh, approve you that? Know, I didn't really have you, anything. Yeah. You always need to have. Plan, right. detailed plan stamp so that I can say, yeah. To protect you. Yeah. But you can make it, hopefully, may be able to make a very quick judgment on many of them, right? That's the whole point of it. That's right. right. <laughs> what else? Anything else on the, the draft criteria? The only I had signed, signed does, not, does not have a white background. Yeah, I think that's a... Um, Is that just a deal breaker? Well... Back when I first came on, on the board, um, I think that some of the design professionals on the board expressed the view that you're going to have a richer sign if you have a colored background with white lettering as opposed to a white background with colored lettering. And particularly if the sign's illuminated, because with that white background, you're kind of, you know, it's, it can be a little harsh, uh, whereas you're getting a much warmer and richer. Uh, light emanating from a, a something that has a colored background. So yeah. I've actually one of the few things that has stuck with me over six years. I actually remember. Was, I know. Was, was Bruce's rule was that point, <laughs> and I support it. I, I actually think that it is it, you know a, a richer look as opposed to having a, a, a white background with black lettering. Okay. That's just a touch point that we probably want to look at. Because there are some perfectly nice, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we have them in town for various banks that have a white logo with dark letters. Yeah. But I know, I thought you might be referring to those horrible ones that have the little letters that are tacked into grooves and they mm -hmm. like sign well, sandwich that, so sandwich yeah. advertisements or whatever. Movie theaters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, those are, you're right, those are just, but that's the sign type. Mm -hmm. But I think there's one bank that has the normal logo over them that's always used. That's a example. white one. Yeah. It has a white yeah. background. Yeah, with black lettering. Okay, it can be done well. Someone on Broadway over by the. I forget where it is. 
this time zone. But again, I guess, you know, for uh, administrative approval, you know, if you've got that, if it's a, a white background with, uh, you know, interior illumination, it can be pretty bright. No, I guess. So that might be something that, again, we as a board might mm -hmm. have to look at. Sure. That's a good point. Okay. I'm okay then. So are you looking for us to, do we need to make any kind of? Yes, we do. Motion? We do? <laughs> are we ready to make a motion? Do you have a copy that you feel good about? So we can I'll say. You, yes, but if, if you would like, I would just want to be sure of that by reviewing what changes would be made. Okay. So yeah, in, I don't think you have to do the whole thing, just the changes. Yep, there's just three things we did, really. Mm -hmm. The third bullet would say it's uh, the same number, etc. And then before the word and, we would say, except that one of the allowed signs proposed may be a bracket sign that meets the zoning requirements for bracket signs, comma, and, so that you flow yep. into the next bullet. Mm -hmm. Then two bullets down, the one that says no changes proposed in the number of logos, we are striking that. And the third change is adding Andy's sentence with the escape valve to the end of, after the sentence, that's three above from the bottom sign, proposals that do not meet the criteria above at the end of that sentence, after the word special permit, we would add Department of Planning Community Development is not required to provide administrative approval and may at any time refer the applicant to the board. So that, that's it. There was one more. We were going to take out the word optional, I think. I think we're losing that whole sentence. That is whole, it the whole sure. sentence? The whole sentence, sentence comes out. Yeah, because that could incorporate that whole sentence. Yeah, so that said, okay. with the, without the word optional, would move into that third bullet. Okay, right. At the end of it. Okay. Is that a motion? I'll, I'll move approval of the um, uh, of the administrative uh, sign review procedures uh, as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice. That's good. Thank you very much for your confidence. Thank and you. who seconded that, please? I second it. Thank you. Okay. One last. Item, minutes. We can go around the table see if anybody has any comments on the minutes from July 21st. Sure. Uh, let's see, this is, I guess, about the third paragraph that says Ms. Kowalski was asked to report, and I thought we might uh, flush out the minutes by saying what she was asked to report on <laughs> and what the gist of the report was. <laughs> Uh, Do you I remember what you were asked to report on? <laughs> no, I, I know we're going back a few uh, That's a very reasonable yeah. request. We'll go back to the notes and see what that was about. And listen, we'll remember. That's a that's a report. And I don't have the agenda even from that night. Uh, third I think I think what it was actually was uh, she was asked to report on um, what um, uh, communications there had been um, between the uh, property owner um, and the town. Okay. And the third paragraph from the bottom of that page uh, that begins with Mr. Kerr stated that having already continued the hearing, etc. The second sentence. He said, it reads, he continued to say that Mr. Klasnik has done everything he was supposed to do at this property. And I think that maybe what we want to say here is at this juncture of the proceedings. Because I don't think we're asking mm -hmm. Mr. Klasnik to do anything mm -hmm. on the property. So, Or at this point. Or at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got it at this point right after it. So actually, you could say at this point. And... Or just, and yeah, well, I said at this juncture of the proceedings, because yeah, I could this say exactly this juncture of the proceedings makes sense. Yeah. And then we could add but and strike at this point and say but the property needs to get straightened up. You want to take out the second at this point? Oh, I guess we could. Seems a little bit redundant. Okay. And then I'm over to the 
fourth page, and this is uh, third page. Is it third? It is yes. third. Uh, so this, I guess the sixth paragraph that begins, Ms. Sipinski said she had mixed feelings. Um, and in the second sentence, uh, which reads, she said it makes sense to stop at Mystic Lake, but to include the area framed by Mystic Chestnut and Medford Streets. Which I think is what you said. Yes. Okay. okay. So insert before the word, in, uh, instead of the word including. But, right. to so right, but to include the area framed by, bounded by, Mystic Chestnut and Medford Streets. Great. Okay. Thank you. And that's all I have. Okay, um, I had provided my uh, comments earlier. Okay. Uh, so when they first, well, indeed, and I'd like to point out that my biggest comment was, is that your election was missing. So I made sure. <laughs> That that was included. I don't think it was you who may have done the minutes, uh, because at first these minutes did not have your election as chairman in them. So uh, we, I also provided comments, and I missed that. I thought, you missed that. <laughs> oh, what a surprise! You notes, missed it. <laughs> those notes had gone to the um, following page on the top. Is it, no, it just it was so funny. I'm like, wait a second. That's the only thing I wanted to see. Yeah, there was nothing there. I wanted to see Christine's election, and it wasn't in here. And, you're, and, you're <laughs> and they're like, wait a second. Exactly. Get Christine's election in by a landslide vote. It was. Yeah. It was a landslide Lucky vote. For me. <laughs> okay. Andrew, right? No, I don't have anything additional. I'm also. I do nothing. I had one comment. Um, in the middle of the third page, Mr. West asked if Millbrook starts at Great Meadows. Mm -hmm. um, then Elsie Fiore mm -hmm. introduced herself, stated she was the chair of the Conservation Commission when Cook's Hollows was put into existence. Didn't she um, have a question? She was curious about what was being proposed for the study area. I couldn't remember when I commented, but I, I think she had, she didn't just stand up and introduce herself and say she had been involved in the past. I think she was interested in the process, and then Mr. Kayer stated that a study in the Millbrook District would help the ARB in the next sentence. Okay. We picked That's up so what you were answering in Elsie's question. And asked for more information. About the study. About the study. Right. That's good. I can't remember exactly if she was asking for the reason for the study or she was just curious okay. about what was happening. Yeah. My only comment. Good. Okay. I hear a motion. I move to approve the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to say I too, right? Yes, 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 yes. You definitely say I. <laughs> you definitely say I. You're voting. The first time I barely said it, and I didn't hear myself. <laughs> okay. So, one last motion. Are you a motion to adjourn? No, let's stay here. <laughs> I'll move to adjourn. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Eight. All right. 9.38 p.m. Well yeah. done. Yay. Oh, I just said. There we go. <laughs> We are adjourned. Oh.